Good morning. It's 7 a.m. here on Friday, April 12th. Today in Baton Rouge, expect sunny skies with a high of 80. In hour one of today's show, we'll recap Pelicans Kings and we'll talk a little bit about the Masters. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN and watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number one of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge studio, starts now. Our Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo! What's good, everyone? What's going on? Friday! That's right, baby! Friday, OGB 104.5 ESPN now on Channel 19 WBTR as well. Got to remember we're on camera now, you know. Did I flip double birds at one point in the show yesterday not thinking about it? Yes, but I think we're okay. I think we're okay. We'll see. You okay because we haven't heard anything yet, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. No, um, you're doing it. I'm and if anybody there. says I did it, I did not. Okay? So it's a lie, and don't slander my good name. Um, what's going on, though, T-Bob, Jake, Taylor, and Jacob Beck hanging out with you today. We got a little Jake and Jake today, a little Jake talk, if you will. Alondra is in Texas. Um, proud of her. Last night, she was at a concert, right? Isn't that where she sent us that picture from? Yeah, it was Parker McCollum. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know who that is, but... Um, yeah, he's a country singer. You know, you know, like if you heard a song. You definitely know. Really? Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. What do y'all think? Y'all think T-Bob? Yeah, because like, there's, there's a couple mainstream ones. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Oh, man. Um... He's got gold he, chain he, cowboy. He's like an F boy. He's like an F boy country guy. That's funny. I never seen he's that a combination. New, he's the new before. generation of country. Yeah, singers. yeah, that's funny. Anyway, she's there and she sent a screenshot. She had a cold Kerr's light with her, and she had SEC baseball on uh, <laughs> some little screen she had in the suite. I, don't shake your head. That's a real one. Okay, uh, actually, a real one would have been watching the Pelicans. Uh, which is what I was watching, to Me be too. fair. Um, fantastic game last night. Well, she night. didn't play last night. On so. the big stage, TNT, the New Orleans Pelicans getting it done. And uh, what a game it was, man. So much to break down from it. Uh, truly fantastic in terms of the how, uh, getting – look, you had already 4 0 the Kings. It was the fifth game of the year. If you won, you eliminated them from sixth seed contention. Uh, again, as we laid out yesterday, you control your own destiny – you go 3-0, and now 2-0, and over these final games, and you will guarantee yourself that you avoid the play-in. And so all that was floating in the air when the Pelicans entered Sacramento last night. And look, they jumped. Oh, and with one more road win, the ability to set a franchise record for road wins in a single season. Yep. And so with all of that narrative floating in the air, the Pelicans jump on him early. C.J. McCollum and Trey Murphy come out on fire, bombing it from three. They run out to a 23-point lead, but well, it's the NBA, right? Yep. And, um, of course, uh, two good teams. There's going to be runs. You're in their stadium. They're, it's going to get frisky. And so you jumped out of this early lead. And then for the next couple of quarters, it was kind of the Kings slowly but surely chipping away and scrapping back. And that's why I love so much well, you saw it as Zion Williamson last night. He, he does not play the final six minutes of the first half as he has kind of an awkward fall, hurts his thumb or wrist, but he comes back out in that third quarter after the Kings have whittled it down to six. He's got his thumb taped up, his finger still taped up from the other day, and what does he do? He drops 17 in the third, and he keeps the Pelicans afloat, and then he lets the shooters close him out in the fourth, and the Pelicans end up with a massive road double-digit win to beat the Kings for the fifth time this season and take one step closer to be in that sixth seed. The Kings were trying everything they could. Uh, they were trying different variations, Sabonis and Barnes, and then you saw Lynn come in for a little bit. That wasn't going to work. Uh, Zion, he was really on it last night, finding his way to the basket, finishing at the rim as well. You're right, he did get nicked up, but like that's a new Zion. He's coming back. He's yeah. not worried about He's going to tape it up. You're going to rub some dirt on it. Yep. He's going to come back. He's going to help his team win this basketball game, in which he certainly did yesterday. But you mentioned CJ and Trey off the top. We got to give CJ 
Probably more attaboys than we give him. Yeah, I was. I, I actually ha- I have that written down as well. That's this is bad on us that we haven't talked more about this. I mean, that man. I did not realize it. That man leads the NBA in three point percentage right now. And Best he, three point shooter in the league. Even in up. those games they were losing at home, like it wasn't because of him. No, like the Magic game. Like he he's still out there and he's putting up over thirty. Spurs. And he had to step up. And we talked about who was going to step up and what were they going to do without B.I. Well, it's been C.J. McCollum. It has been him that has stepped up, and he has been the leader of this basketball team. And he did it again last night. Now, you know, Trey throwing 27 in there is always going to help. Anytime you can get that kind of production from Trey Murphy, typically when he's on, you're on. But and yes. he's done a great job stepping up as well in Brandon Ingram's absence, even even with the struggles. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Now, he has, and... You know, Jose played, I thought, pretty well last night. You've mentioned Daniels a couple of times. Those guys did what they had to do to help you get this victory, but it's been CJ leading the team. Dyson Daniels is who I want to talk about. Dyson Daniels' minutes felt huge last night, um, and and he is truly uh, that 3 and D. Now, okay, this is a really dumb question. Uh, this is his second year, right? Or is this yes. his – okay, this is not – okay, thank you. Okay, I'm making sure. For, I, for some reason in my head last night, I couldn't – uh, the Hawkins is your, is your lottery yes, pick yes, this year. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. But, but he is truly that 3 and D guy, and it brings so much value, and he can guard all the positions. And it just felt like last night um, you're not going to look at – when you look at the box score, I don't even know what the box score looks like. I haven't seen it. But I'm, I'm not sure that he's going to jump off the page in that regard. Uh, but it just felt like he impacted the game in so many big moments, whether it was hitting a big three – um, coming up with a big steal, uh, Dyson Daniels to be that young and to be playing this these important of minutes, right? Like with the season on the line, the game on the line, and he damn near played starter minutes. It felt like last night. Do you have it pulled yeah. up? He played twenty five minutes. He was four of eight from the field, two of five from beyond the arc. He had four rebounds, an assist, and uh, a steal, a block, only one turnover. So I'm saying, just doing a little bit of everything, not making mistakes. Playing solid as hell, like th- those are the type of contributions that you have to get from your from your uh, your your non stars to be a good playoff team and to have a, have a chance at a run. Another guy that we probably don't give enough credit for him <clears throat> missing time and it being maybe a reason why they, there was a little bit of a slide was Jose Alvarado. Yep. Last night he gives you twenty two minutes. He's five of eight from the field, four of six from beyond the arc. Yeah. He has six rebounds and six assists. Yeah, he's he plus was, 17 last night. And I feel like he didn't play a ton the first half. I feel like most of those are second quarter half quarter he did. Okay. Second quarter he did not. That's what it was. And I missed part of the first quarter um, and, and kind of hopped in uh, the end of the first, beginning of the second. But, but yeah, Jose, though, huge down the stretches as, as to help separate like him, Dyson, every, just really big shots uh, every time when it felt like the Kings were mainly uh, or finally going – to get over that hump, they managed to hold them off um, with with big shots of three. And now you look and um, Trey, and again, Trey Murphy ends up being the dagger with a minute and a half left. And now you look and you set a franchise record, 27 road wins. And um, going and, and look, it's not going to get any easier, though, because uh, coming up tonight, coming off a night where you go 22 of 40, from beyond three, you are now going to go against the squad that basically, I think of Bane and Batman, Jake, right? The rest <laughs> of the NBA, the Pelicans included, merely adopted the three. Yeah, The Golden State Warriors were born into it, molded by it. I mean, for my money, I still don't think in my adult life I have seen a single athlete have a bigger impact on a sport than what Steph Curry did to the NBA. I mean, he completely shifted the meta. He changed every single age-old nugget of wisdom that we grew up on, Jake, watching basketball. Where it was, you know, live by the three, die by the three. You can never be, mm-hmm. it's not consistent enough. It's not sustainable. You can't. And then, you you know, the war is like, well, we think it's a market inefficiency and all that sort of stuff. But it all does, none of that works. None of that market inefficiency theory works without Steph Curry. And now, 9 o'clock tonight in Golden State, that's who stands in your way. Oh, and by the way, the Warriors, 9-1 and one in the last 10. Yeah, As hot as any team. The hottest team in the NBA. And that's who you're going to have to square up with. And there's a ton on the line, as Andrew Lopez points out. If the Pelicans win tonight and the Suns lose to the Kings, the Pelicans are guaranteed the sixth seed. 
Now, the Suns have the Kings tonight, and the Suns will close with the T-Wolves, okay? So there's a good chance maybe they won one that. So you may have a little margin of error. But you know what? I don't even want to have to play with those scenarios. You control your destiny. I know it's a back-to-back. I know it's the hottest team in the NBA. I know it's the man who literally changed the NBA, changed the entire sport, every single level, when you think about how, how, how strategy works now. But find a way to get it done and make this season work it. An inch one game closer to maybe even finishing with that 50-win season. And so for the Warriors, obviously they're going to be in the play-in game, but they're still playing for something because you've got, what is it, three teams, T, I believe, tied there Let me with, check. within the play-in. I, I believe that you've got three that are tied at 45 and 35, and so they still have something to play for. And look, they last night they didn't play great. Yes, yes, 45-35, Warriors, Kings, Lakers. So last night they didn't play great against the Trailblazers on the road. I mean, they ended up getting the victory because the Trailblazers are 21-59, and 59, but they didn't play well, and I wonder. I would assume that they're going to come out, and everybody's going to be available. We'll see Chris oh, yeah. Paul. We'll see Curry. You'll see Wiggins. You'll see everyone available. I don't because they're still trying to figure out where they're going to be in the play-in, and there's going to be strategy for who they want to play. What's a better matchup for them? Yeah, so I mean, they're not going to lay down. No, look, uh, they're the nine, and they you you want to get to eight. I mean, if you get to eight, you have uh, two games. To try to make it in, whereas if you're nine or ten, you only have one. Um, I, I don't think they can get to seven, uh, as they're two games back from the Suns right now. So yes, they 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 too have uh, much to play for. I mean, every, everybody. I I gotta say, the play ins genius. You know what I'm saying? It um because also you you know what I love about I was thinking about this the other day. Finishing top six. I mean, just look at the Western Conference records. You got damn near. You got to win fifty games to finish top six. Finishing top six deserves to be rewarded. You get to the AC, and it can be a little more mediocre. So I'm actually okay with not rewarding the eight seed. Like, I like this kind of false cutoff they've created at six and then letting the other teams kind of battle it out who gets in the playoffs. It just provides so much intrigue. Look, the Pelicans have taken advantage as yeah. a 10 seed that fought their way all the way to the playoffs. And now uh, this is our first time experiencing, you know, through, through a front row seat, a, a six seed race. And I think it's just a fantastic bit of yeah. modern um, evolution from the NBA and Adam Silver, and I think it's a resounding success. Well, to your point, like in the East right now, the Bulls and the Hawks, those fans wouldn't care. They wouldn't care right now. No. Because they would be out of it. Yeah. But now they're 9 and 10, and they're going to be in a play-in. Like over in the West, it wouldn't matter as much this year, but you would have a fight to the death for the eight seed in the West. Yes. Right, because you would have like think about this like if you were the Lakers and Golden State right now, you would be on the outside looking in at forty five and thirty five. You would be on the outside looking in if it wasn't for the play in. So different years is going to mean different things. But I am with you. It does like over in the East. Like there's more. Yeah, there's more fan bases that are going to be intrigued and still in it because their team technically does have an opportunity. I would probably feel some type of way if I was a Sixers Heat fan though. Uh, This is my first time looking at the East, but still. I think it's I think it's fantastic and um it's made the end of this season <laughs> so so uh Look at that just three so much seed, fun. Though, boy. Uh where uh, the Knicks who beat the the breaks off the Celtics. The three last seed night. at forty eight and thirty two. Your Pelicans desperately trying to avoid the play in forty eight and thirty two. Get the hell out of here, East old garbage ass conference. Uh although the Celtics are the you know, the best team record. Yeah, beating up on a bunch of Kids, a bunch of dummies. Not last night. If you're a fifth grader in third grade, you better be the smartest. They caught those third grader hands last night. Uh, who beat him? Knicks. Oh, okay. There we go. Um, so look, massive game night against Curry and the Warriors. Again, the the base, the most base thing to say here is you win and you're in. You managed to win these final two at Golden State tonight at home against the Lakers, and you will be the sixth seed. You will be guaranteed. A full uh, series. Now, I don't know who you're going to play as Nuggets, T-Wolves, Thunder still jockeying for position there. But um, I'm starting to like your chances after the big win last night. And, again, I think my, my my main highlight of the night, Zion getting a little dinged up, like Jake said, rubbing some dirt on it, coming back. And then in a third quarter in which the crowd was threatening, the Kings seemed to have the momentum. It kept looking like they were finally going to break through and wear you down. 
It was Zion that kind of carried you through that third and then allowed the shooting to take back over later in the game and close it out. Love that part of it. I didn't hate the uh, the Jose being on Fox and having you know that defense that he yeah. has and Fox kind of you know trying to do something probably outside of himself and then Zion steals the ball and has a windmill dunk. Oh, that was crazy! I didn't hate that. That either. was tight. No, I uh, <laughs> also at one point I, I I actually wrote like to myself in my notes. I was like, I'm I'm watching this game out of fear right now. I need to stop being such a like such a wuss about this whole thing. But I did not expect to be stressing about Harrison Barnes when my night started and yet here I am in the first half just like ripping my hair out from the old man like dropping 12 consistently making plays but hey yeah because he has not been doing that uh Pelicans find a way to yep. get it done anybody want to guess how much Harrison Barnes makes this this singular season oh this year yeah. oh it's gotta be 20 mil uh, I mean, I like you could the NBA contracts or such. You could tell me any number, and I'd be like, yeah, like sure. twenty twenty That's plus sure. million sounds right. Seventeen. Okay, yeah, there you go. Harrison Barnes makes seventeen million dollars this season. I think I was so stressed in the first half. I ended up looking up his numbers. I think he's averaging like eleven or twelve a game. I just it was just it was it was a lot in the first half. He was making too many consistent plays, and it was, it was very frustrating. Um, and then do y'all do y'all follow Retro Pels on Twitter? He does the anthem after every the game. Anthem. Did you see last night's anthem? I didn't. Uh, Star Wars themed. It's so good. It's Luke doing the trench run, and instead of Obi Wan saying "Use the Force," it's AD saying "Hit the anthem," and it is uh, absolutely fantastic. It 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 was probably a top five internet moment uh, for me all time watching that last night. I was in such a good mood. Um, so shout out to your Pelicans again. No rest for the weary. Massive game tonight in Golden State. Also, I would like to say this. Um, God, I hate you, Bally. I hate you so much. You're such garbage. For the first time a couple nights ago, I used somebody's login instead of just doing like an illegal stream, and that app is the hottest of garbage that you can possibly fathom. It won't even let you stream to your TV or anything. They have it built into where it blocks that. I I, I, I hate you, Bally, and I, I hope that um, I just can't wait to see the back of you. Cannot wait for you to be out this house and never come back, you piece of trash. Anyway, uh, I love have, AD and Joel, though. I mean, you could have the direct TV. Not playing this game with you today. You could. Not playing. I'm you, not. I'm not. You could it is, have it. And it you wouldn't have to early. worry about I'm that. I'm not playing this game. I've watched with every you. Pelicans game basically. I, have, I also have. You do. Valley. So I use yeah. I use Fubo. I know. Kind I, don't, of, I, don't yeah. I don't need you guys. Yeah. I, I know both of this. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, game's gonna be awesome. It just yeah. you see TNT and you get Chuck and everybody at half, and Chuck's got me dying when he's. Showing Zion how to fall without catch yourself, which I thought Chuck was pretty smooth. It was pretty good, actually. Like I'm saying, I, I challenge any. What Chuck's got to be fifty something. Yeah, maybe, maybe oh, at late least. 40, maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, I, I definitely, challenge, definitely. He's in his fifties, yeah, probably almost sixty. Okay, I challenge any fifties, late fifties, to fall like Chuck did last night, and and, and just to have no problem whatsoever. That that entire show is literally just Chuck doing just dumb stuff, just and then Shaq, Shaq, and then Shaq, yeah, then Shaq <laughs> saying, "Do it again, Chuck. Do it again, <laughs> Chuck." He's sixty one. Sixty one, and my guy looked good showing Big Z how to fall last night. Yeah. Um. All right. Shout out, pals. That was so much fun. Here's to hoping LSU baseball can give us some of that tonight. We'll talk about it next here on OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Go to All-Star Toyota, Baton Rouge.com. All-Star Toyota of Baton Rouge.com. Uh, look, man, they're located right there off of Airline in Goodwood. It's very conveniently located. And if you need a service center, a body shop, you get an accident, insurance claims are welcome and all makes and models are welcome. Okay. doesn't have to be a Toyota. doesn't have to be from all-star. You mentioned T-Bob, Jake, OTB, whatever. You get a hundred dollars off that deductible, but that's not really why you want to go there. That's just a little sweetener, right? You want to go there because you get a free professional estimate. They have a shuttle service. So they drop you off and pick you back up. Uh, like if it's just like a day long fix, right? They have rental cars right there outside. If it's a multi day fix and you need that, so whatever you need, they have at All Star Toyota. Uh, they do. It's a one stop shop. If you're buying new, if you're leasing, or if you are renting, not going to find that anywhere else, right? The full fleet is always going to be available. Call Miss Lisa Sessions today to get in contact with that rental department. Let them know when you've got a trip coming up, when you need that vehicle, if you need something better on gas mileage, something bigger, whatever it is. They've got you covered over at All-Star, so reserve that vehicle today. You can always go online, find the full fleet right there at allstartoyotaofbatonrouge.com.
In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. REC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we on Friday's OTB. Did the Pels manage to get it done in a must win out west? Plus, final prep for LSU baseball's trip to Knoxville. Back against the wall. And some champagne shenanigans. Off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 1045 ESPN. Congratulations to this year's Ultimate Bracket Challenge winners. First place gets the $2,024 is Michael Mercanti of Hammond. Mercanti, sorry. Hey, and uh, second place uh, gets a 4K TV and soundbar, Richard Sabin of Baton Rouge. Not spelled the Sabin okay. well, it's okay. with an I. Okay. So okay. It's okay. Even, even though he's hey, almost here, certainly Dick no Saban. relation, but... Uh, third Dick place. Saban. Oh my um, God! Literal Dick Saban in second place. <laughs> third, third place. Uh, it was a tie. Good catch. It was a tie for third place, but we're such nice people that we're going to give them both a two night stay at the Bow. Hell yeah! Uh, our chat's very own Bilbo Baggins and Clayton what? Rooney. Okay, nice. shout out, dude. I'm gonna go Bilbo. I um. I, I still I have I have a bottle of whiskey. I just got to deliver it to the. We we did a neighbor we do a neighborhood pool every year where. The buy-in's just alcohol. It's like a nice bottle of alcohol, so the winner just gets, like, stocked up. I, I got it. I'm still going to drop it off. I guess I'm just saying this because I'm so sick of them pestering me about it. But um, my bracket in that, Jake, 
I finished in the bottom 13% of people in the world. Um, like so actively bad, it's it's uh, almost impressive. That is bad. Uh, it turns was, out you can't just pick at random. I guess there was I one know. person in here that got the champion right. Uh, me? Not me. Oh, who ended up? So you won ours. I don't know. I had to go tell. I mean, probably. Dude, I they're, do they're not all bad, understand. But yeah, because he had the championship. I do yeah. not understand how to do like bracket math without the website doing it for me. I have. Well, every uh, round has no idea. a point system. Yeah, right, I know. I know. Get, See, all right, you know, I'm like, my, okay. my eyes are glazing over. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. There's too much math there. Speaking of math, uh, napkin math dictates that the Pelicans handed the Kings about 16 to 17% of their losses this season, which I love. Uh, now, I do love the Sacramento Library uh, YouTube account, which if you don't follow it, is Why fantastic. Why the hell? What I follow the Sacramento, what it, Sacramento. Library I don't know account? how it got famous. It was TikTok or YouTube Shorts, but it became like one of those just like kind of the only thing zeitgeist sort of. The movements. only thing that I that I know about Sacramento outside of J Will, C Web, Bloody Devok, Hey Do Turkaloo, and, and that crew. Page go to team, right? Mike Bibby, bro, come on now. They uh, well, actually, they, Mike Bibby and Jay Will weren't on there. Like White Chocolate weren't. They got on there. traded. They, yeah. traded, they traded to the Grizzlies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean. Jay Will was the sexier yeah. option. Mike Bibby was the more winning. They, yeah. they should have beat the Lakers with Bibby. They, yes. Yeah, they should have. Yes. That. There was that game where the Lakers got like 40 free throws, like game six or something. They should have been to a multiple finals. To yeah. a referee who's since been to prison. Yeah, so, but yes, yeah, 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 true, yeah, true, yeah. true. Uh, so I know that, and I know that my flight to my honeymoon got uh, canceled, so we had to fly into Sacramento and drive to San Francisco. I don't know. There's, there's, there's a Sacramento library account, and they have like an old school printing press, and... They do printing press shorts, and it's, like, really satisfying to watch. It is the capital of California. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, people always, you know, people forget. Um, all right, let's get into a little LSU baseball, a uh, little weekend preview. A little bit of a change up here, Jake. Pun intended. Uh, unintended, but it worked. Pun intended. Um, game one, Gage jump. <laughs> Going to be taking the mound. Luke Holman being saved for Drew Beam and Game 2. A little Saturday night action. So, Gage Jump, and Tennessee has not announced who they're throwing tonight. Gage Jump, you're talking about challenge? Jake, you're 18 years, or excuse me, he's probably, what, like 19 now? Yeah. 19 or 20. Yeah, 19 probably push you 20. Yeah, yeah. But still, young cat, your first year really playing, so relatively inexperienced, and now... With the defending national champion season on the line, three and nine in the SEC, you have to get one or you will not make the postseason. Right? You at least have to get one. You probably got to get two this weekend. Season on line, Gage Jump now has to stare down this Tennessee volunteer lineup. Let's see how big your balls are, Gage Jump. We mentioned it yesterday. Uh, we went to the conference stats yesterday. Here are Tennessee's just overall season stats from an offensive perspective. Um, everything I'm about to tell you is first in the SEC, unless I say otherwise. Uh, batting 338 as a team, slugging 671. They've got a 445 on base percentage. That's second in the SEC. Uh, they've scored 353 runs. They've got 372 hits, 327 ribbies, 94 doubles. They've hit 89 home runs, which is second in the SEC. But again, as you mentioned yesterday, in conference only play, 45 home runs. Second place has 36. So, Gage Jump, Friday night against what is far and above the best lineup in the entire conference. And, of course, the conference is the best in the entire country. All right. Let's see. Let's see who's going to fight. I Look, I mean... I don't hate this. I don't hate this move. And I agree with everything that you just said, everything on the line, and you're putting it on the on the shoulders of a, of a young player, a player that is incredibly talented but doesn't have a lot of experience because of injury. Uh, but he's been solid. And maybe you're trying to change up the mojo of the game two. Because the game two against Florida and Vanderbilt mm -hmm. has not gone your way. In fact, it's been heartbreaking the way – that you lost those games. And so maybe that's something that you're trying to change up a little bit. Because Gage Jump has given you a chance in the games that he's pitching. So he's going to give you a chance yep. tonight. And then you have your ace going in game two, maybe to switch that up. And so it will be a lot of pressure. Not that he hasn't thrown you think in it big has games You don't want to go against Beam? 
like, I wonder how that came about because it was, yeah, I don't know. My mind initially went to maybe trying to change up some of the mojo in game two. And sure. because we've seen it play out, you win game one, heartbreaking game two loss, yeah, yeah, you get housed in game whatever. three. Yeah. And so maybe it's just trying to shuffle the deck enough to be able to go out there and have that because he's, he's going to shuffle it. I mean, he told us yesterday, I'm surprised yeah. more people didn't pick this up. Like, Gavin Gidry could play the infield. Yeah, what weekend. did he say? He specifically said Gidry in the infield, and what was the Kate other? Kate Anderson, Anderson outfield. Anderson outfield. Yeah, Kate Anderson in the outfield. Trying to carry extra pitchers yeah. uh, to, to this series. Uh, what do you do with Griffin Herring now that you're going home in game two? Right, because home in game one, it was pretty obvious. If I it think, was close I think, and you had to get a dub, yeah. you throw Herring. I don't think you pair them together. I, I think Herring would be tonight. If, if you have tied or have a lead. Okay. I agree. No, we, we were talking about it the other day. It's like, you think, oh, we have our best pitcher on the mound. We don't need as much hitting. I disagree. I think when Holman's on the mound, you got to hit a ton for what Jake just said. You don't have to throw Holman yeah, and yeah, Herring yeah. in the same like, game. You shouldn't, have yeah. had to, you shouldn't have had to burn Griffin last even, week. Even if Holman gives up two runs and you're up by three runs in the ninth inning, you don't need Herring to come in. You can save him for another game to try to piece this together because you got to get wins in a hurry. That's been your issue. You've lost a lot of, like, four to three games or yeah. whatever in game one and you burn home and, and hearing. No, ideally last week would have played out with like Ackenhausen on Friday and then Heron being in that position on Saturday and you probably end up winning that series. But we all know about the error and everything else that went wrong in the six. Also, to be fair, Holman did give up that three-run home run, uh, which if he had managed to avoid, that would have been massive. So um, we can, you know, cry over that all we want. But uh but yeah, I'm going to be in. Okay, so so Herring still, if you have a lead, definitely going to be the option to come out and try to shut down that game. Um, and then and then we'll see from there. Again, Tennessee's staff, not anything to write home about this year either. I mean, in conference, you've got like a seven and a half ERA. I think they're at like a six eight. So they're not too far ahead of you. So like, if if you're talking about keys, obviously doing just. You're not going to shut down Tennessee's lineup, but trying to bottle it or 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 keep it contained. And then uh, these LSU bats got to show up. And, and it's been a mixed bag because, like, offensively, the numbers are kind of putrid overall. Um, in conference, like we mentioned it yesterday, your best hitter in conference is Braswell. And, well, you, you're, you're down on playing him because of his defense right now. But he's the only guy that's over 300. Second is Bear Jones, somebody who you think always struggles in conference play. And then even, like, a Tommy White's hitting, like, 260. That said, I thought you were actually pretty great last weekend offensively against maybe the second yeah. best staff, if not the best staff yeah, game in the one, SEC in Vandy. Uh, that's the obvious one, but game two, like even though you lost, you fought every yes. single time that Vandy answered, you answered until the very end. Yeah, so I, I like you, yes, the offense played well enough to win that series, and that's kind of been a theme. The offense has played well enough to win a lot of these series, and so uh, they probably take on even greater importance this weekend, Given that that's the relative weakness of Tennessee, and you're likely going to get in a in, in a scoring uh, scoring match at some point in a track race. Um, Brett Moore says Tennessee blasts the ball out of that little league park all season, <laughs> then has deep outs in the CWS. Uh, yeah, look, I, you know, I hope I hope that ends up being true again this year. But all I care about right now is going to Lindsey Nelson and finding a way to get at least one four and eleven going into the turn is awful, but you have a chance. Three and twelve, you don't. Five and ten, and okay, I'm feeling like you you might make it, but uh, we'll just see. And 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 you could tell it meant a lot to Jay yesterday. We talked about basically like, look, we're not going anywhere. Uh, I want to see who's going to fight, and and that that is something that I'm watching right now because also you got to remember, guys, this team is future oriented. Ultimately, he's a bunch of new guys, he's a bunch of young guys. These are guys that are going like the same way that all these teams you're losing to return so much and they have all the upperclassmen and they have all the experience, that's going to be you over the next couple of years. So the lessons learned today will bear huge fruit over time, and that's why I want to see, okay, who should we be excited about, not just this year, but even going forward into multiple years. Oof. I. Right. Uh, this like backs against the wall, going to Tennessee, switching it up, changing it up, T Bob. I it's either going to go one way or the yeah. other. It feels like, well, like there's yeah. not going to be like it, I don't even feel like it's going to be the Florida Vandy series where you won one, lost one, and had a heartbreaker. Like I feel like it is going to be truly like 
we just got housed all, all of these games, or you're going to win two games? That's uh, There's the old Malcolm Gladwell book, one of them. Maybe it's, it's one about underdogs. Maybe it's David versus Goliath. But it kind of talks about how, yeah, man, like when – and it's what Jay said basically yesterday is, right, like sometimes you have to go all in. If you want to create results yeah. that are not likely, you want to create upsets – you have to engage in riskier strategies. Like in hockey, why do you pull the goalie at the end of the game? You you might get scored on real yeah. easily and just go ahead and, okay, it's over now, but you do it so that you 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 give yourself more of a chance of trying to, to, to get that equalizer. So Soccer, you move, like if you're in the 90th and extra time, you got a corner, goalie coming that's up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So that, that's what this is, pull the goalie. Yeah. For LSU this weekend, and let's see if it uh, let's see if they can get it done. LSU Tennessee starting tonight in Lindsey Nelson. You got Pelicans as well. What a night it's going to be! Uh, all right, we still got spring ball to get to as well as that game's coming up tomorrow. Keep it locked right here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. Go to CentralPlumbing.org nine two five eight five five two CentralPlumbing.org nine two five eight five five two. You have any plumbing issue? That pops up. Why not go with the squad that's been at it for 50 years, that has flat rate pricing, where everybody's licensed, bonded, and insured, that has a big fleet that can service all of your residential or commercial needs. Uh, it just makes too much sense. It's just too easy. I've been a proud Central Plumbing repeat customer for years now. You should be as well. Uh, check them out at centralplumbing.org or call 925-8552. And when you go to the website, you'll be able to see what they can do for you in the remodel game. That's at your home or your business. So your home, if it's just, you know, one restroom, then certainly they can handle that. But if it's at your business where you have maybe an entire floor downtown in a building and you got seven or eight, rest, like they can handle anything. Like so nothing's going to be too big for them. Upgrade today. Go tankless as well with that tankless water heater we tell you about. Give them a call for all that information at 225-925-8552. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard. Our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. 
Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you, our mobile banking. Join us for the Friday edition of Live at Lunch from Rafino's on Highland Road. We'll keep you up to date on everything going on at the Masters and preview LSU versus Tennessee in college baseball. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Friday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Failure happens to us all, but it's our champions of all. The only thing that matters from a loss is if you get back up when you fall, you gotta get up. Failure happens to us all. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Uh, goal South is in the goal this weekend just not to get run ruled for the four straight series. Okay, not technically true. Arkansas, you didn't get run ruled. 7-5. Um, Does that matter, yes. though? Three, no, no, no. Because no, that's the only no. series. Like, you no, 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 no. To be, to be, to be, to be clear, I'm, that's all a bit tongue-in-cheek because, yes, one of the main goals this weekend should be to not get your ass kicked in Game 3. Like, look like you still have some fight or give a damn left in you in Game 3. Then again, I did think last week's Game 3 felt a bit differently than the others, and, and Jay basically said as much, where he was like, yeah, they were just, like, way better than us. By the time we got to what we had left versus what they had left, like again, Vandy saving their ace for game three, it was like you know that 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 just uh, you 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 were never really going to to match up too well there. Um, <clears throat> is there anything funnier right now, guys, than what is going on with the Kentucky Wildcats? <laughs> I mean, the most legendary basketball program of all time, one of, you know, the Alabama football, Michigan football, whatever, of basketball, is going to hire Mark Pope from BYU as their head coach. And if you're like me, you you, you, you probably hear that and you're like, okay, well, I don't really know much about him. BYU's in the tournament this year, but I'm sure he has, like, a good resume to, to, to inspire confidence for this hire. Yeah. Um, and then you look it up, you're like, okay, okay, he played in Kentucky, played yeah. two years, won a natty there as a player. Okay, that's cool, man. Uh, this man does not have a tournament win as a head coach. He was 77 and 56 at Utah Valley. Then he gets the BYU job five years ago. He's done pretty good, 110 and 52. He's made two tournaments, has not won mm -hmm. a tournament game. And this is not to say that Mark Pope's a bad coach. This is just to say it is wild that we have arrived at a point where the Kentucky Wildcats, going from John Calipari, one of the most successful coaches of our era, going from John Calipari, who left them willingly to hire a coach that hasn't even won a tournament game. That's that's pretty stunning. The only positive I would say for Kentucky fans, you know how all schools like to do the uh, the the old white smoke tweets when a new coach is chosen? Well, it's actually perfect because you're literally choosing a new pope. So so like cue, cue, cue the white smoke music as we have a pope. Yeah, so I, I, I know this coach well. I've had him on the show many times, and I think he's a good basketball coach, T. But to your point... He didn't even dominate in the West Coast Conference when he was at BYU before they moved to the Big 12. Yeah. In fact, they were the third best team when he was there. It was behind Gonzaga and St. Mary's. So if I'm a Kentucky fan, I'm like, I'm getting a coach that never won the West Coast Conference. Like that to me, that would be troublesome. I'm also getting a coach that didn't win the WAC when he was at Utah Valley. All right. The Western Athletic Conference, that WAC that used to play football. It is WAC. So they play football at a lower level now. So that would that would be troublesome. Now he did hold his own in the Big Twelve this year. They tied for fifth. It was a really good Big Twelve. We know that. That would be my worry. Is he fifth. never <laughs> dominated lower level competition. And you could say, well, he had the same ability. Well, not not really. At a place like BYU, and you're in the West Coast Conference, you should dominate like Gonzaga yeah. and like St. Mary's. Yeah. And you did not. You finished second a couple of times, but also you finished fifth twice in the West Coast Conference. And so 
this is a, a, another example of like blue blood stuff now in, in college basketball doesn't really mean anything. It, it just, it doesn't for me. Like UConn's won six titles in the last 25 years and we don't put them in the same conversation as Kentucky and Duke and Carolina and Kansas. Like, what are we doing? Uh, I think now they do. I think after these last two, they do. But yes, to to your point, and still they don't maybe have the the uh, the. It doesn't evoke I, the same feeling when you hear UConn versus. Somebody here brought Kentucky. up. Well, somebody brought up like Kelvin Sampson yesterday on the show. I said, what? What? Houston's a better job than Kentucky. Hmm. Houston's in the Big Twelve, which is a premier basketball conference. Now yeah. you're in the city of Houston, which. Every AAU tournament in America is going to stop through Houston at some yeah, point. It's yeah. like the hotbed. Yeah. You know you've got incredible talent. You have donors that are not Fertitas going to say no. Gonna, yeah, Fertitas There's no no. Paying. He's just paying for You have for a, everything. a new arena. You have a new practice facility. You have everything. Why, would you go, why in the world would you go to Kentucky now if you're Samson, you're at Houston, and you've got it set up better than they do now. And the, the expectation is no, high, really but point. it's not toxic like it is in Kentucky. Yeah, I mean, it's, you don't have to deal with Big Blue Nation. No. Um, speaking of Big Blue Nation, so obviously Kentucky fans are wigging out on this, right? And according to Kentucky Sports Radio, this is purely a Mitch Barnhart decision. Barnhart just really liked Pope, and he's decided to go with him. So he is putting his nuts on the line. Here is some audio that I had Taylor edit up. He, he took about 30 seconds worth of curse words out of this, Jake. But this is a uh, Kentucky Sports Radio spaces from last night. A little little fan reaction to the to the Pope news. What are you doing? How I don't know. This is my logical thing, right? Calipari needed yeah. to go. Last time I was on here, I will tell you, Cal needed to go, and he walked. He saved yeah. us thirty three million dollars. Thirty three <laughs> million. God, that's three times the amount of money that Churchill made last year on Derby Day from betting. So like they, <laughs> he had all this money. Sad. Right, he. Uh, I, I work for a horse farm, so like I've, I got a of bunch of weird fun facts. Um, no, so keep going. Have, I'll interrupt. You, 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 you let him go, right? Uh, so you, now the short list comes out. It's Scott Drew, Dan Hurley, and uh, Banger of a song, and Billy Donovan. And <laughs> your, 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 your thing is, right? We're gonna make the Godfather offer, right? To Dan Hurley, he, he's probably yeah, not gonna absolutely. Win. He's probably not going to leave. That's fine. Uh, then you're probably going to go for Billy Donovan. Timeline, he, he seems very interested. Everyone and their and Mother Mary herself says Billy Donovan's interested. <laughs> timeline. You just got to sit aren't, on Aren't it. you sick of him? Aren't you sick of him? Like, damn it, he's, I covered two. I mean, I, so here's the thing, though, about Barnhart, <laughs> right? All these brown nosers love to say, it's like, yeah, but look at our other coaches. I'm happy that your ball-sniffing team gets first. <laughs> like, I'm so happy. I care about basketball. I got big fat Mark Stoops blowing every game to Tennessee. Somehow we managed to beat Louisville every year. Cool. But we keep getting yeah, dumped on by everyone else. Like, I don't get it. I don't Barnhart Barnhart needs to be beaten with grit. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so they're handling it well. I will say this, and we gotta go to break, but there's a lot of real estate right now, and you're seeing these takes. Sub burns with one of these takes. There's a lot of real estate to be had in the, I actually think it's a good hire department. You have a Kentucky grad who really, you know, bleeds blue and blah, 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 blah. And I'm not saying that's, like, incorrect, right? That's potentially maybe correct. That's legitimate. But if you were a Kentucky fan, you would not feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a no. fine take to yeah. have outside looking in. But if you're a Kentucky fan, you would be furious right now that you have landed on Mark Pope, BYU's coach, a man who does not have a single tournament win, not even a single conference championship, to Jake's point. This is not like AM hiring Mike Elko. AM has never won, so they have to keep trying new things, right? This is not that. This is uh, supposed to be a top three job in America. This is supposed to be Alabama football, and you hire Mark Pope. Oof. Should have gone Will Wade, dude. All right, when we get back, more OTB, wrapping up our one. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. G-E-A-U-X, Tommies.com. Go Tommies. Tommies, windows, doors, and siding. Y'all, you need hardy plank or vital siding. You need wood or vinyl windows. You need any type of doors. You need to get Tommies, man. They're dependable. Integrity. 
Tommy himself is so charismatic, he's going to blow your socks off. And I tell you every day, just make Tommy's one of your three bids. Okay, I'm not even telling you, you just have to use it. Make them one of the three bids on your project and let Tommy and the crew prove to you why they are the correct choice for your job. Go to the website, gotommies.com. And like T-Bob said, they'll prove it to you. I mean, as soon as they come out, they're going to give you everything that you need and much more. They've done it for me. They've done it for T. They'll do it for you as well. But just if you don't want to believe us, that's fine. Just go check out the testimonials on the website. I mean, they've got pages after pages of happy clients because that's what kind of service you're going to get from Tommy. GoTommies.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Coors Light? Oh shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. REC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. REC, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case. Join me for a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Preston Guy gets you ready for the spring game. Chris DeMuy at LSU in Tennessee. And we'll check in on Augusta National. Hunt Palmer Show, one to three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. Mark your calendars and invite your friends as we celebrate the NFL Draft in style with the Boudreaux Electric ESPN Batteries Draft Party live from Don Juan's Cigar Bar and exclusively on the 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. Join us Thursday, April 25th at 7 p.m. and hang with the ESPN Baton Rouge Dream Team while indulging in the finest cigars paired with signature cocktails. It's the Boudreaux Electric ESPN Baton Rouge Draft Party at Don Juan's Cigar Bar and live on the 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel.
All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back, OTV. Sorry, we went really long in that last segment. That's on me talking about Mark Pope in Kentucky. Again, I think it's the funniest things, uh, funniest thing going on. Towards. Tell me, okay, I'm about to play Mark Pope rapping Hamilton. Is this cringe or not? Hit it. I have a hidden talent. Just in the hopes that Lynn Manuel, that you're watching, I'm gonna get a scholarship to King's College. I probably shouldn't brag, but Dad got amazed and astonished. The problem is, I got a lot of brains, but no polish. I gotta holler just to be her with every word. I drop knowledge, I'm a diamond in the rough, a shiny piece of coal. Everybody, do I, have I, bro, I actually thought that was pretty well done. I thought that was pretty well done. That was without music as well, right? That music is added afterwards. I, I thought, I thought that was pretty good, Mark. The nerdiest rap voice I've ever heard. Well, but it's kind of in the style. That is kind it of is, Lin Manuel. Is, yeah. You know, that is Lin Manuel style. That's not like so off base there. Jake, you got 10 seconds. Cringe or not? Cringe adjacent. Okay. Okay. Probably fair. Probably fair. Uh, hour two. Sorry for short segment. Hour two coming off up next. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. We'll get it together next segment. Um, this man may win the natty, says Eric Gander. Uh, Shoe Banks is super cringe. I don't know. I kind of liked it. Uh, but not as much as I like Coleman Roof, to be fair. Um, then again, Coleman Roof is Louisiana's most reliable and respected roofing company. I don't know that Mark Pope's anybody's most reliable or respected coach, even if he's a good guy. Um, Coleman Roof would be an A-plus hire. And they are for you and your job, no matter what it is. Any size job, commercial, residential, anywhere in the Gulf South region, any type of roof. And remember, they do the construction portion as well. So, like, let's say a tree falls in your home. They don't just rebuild the roof. They rebuild the interior also. Go to ColemanRoof.com today. Yeah, when you go to the website, you'll see what we talk about every single day. Sure, they can handle anything that you need with your roof. That's commercial or residential. But also, don't forget about the construction side of things. It truly is a one-stop shop. You'll find out why at ColemanRoof.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans the Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas 
for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. here on Friday, April 12th. Today in Baton Rouge, expect sunny skies with a high of 80. An hour two of today's show, we'll preview LSU spring football game and we'll talk some more SEC baseball. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN and watch us on YouTube at the 104.5 ESPN channel. Hour number two of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, starts now. Where do we go? All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the, the Bench, bench with, with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, Peter, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what happened, y'all? Welcome back. <laughs> OTB, hour number two. T-Bob, Jake, Jake, and Taylor hanging out with you today. As uh, Alondra is out, I think it's in the chat a little bit ago. What's up, Alondra? Hope you're enjoying Texas. Hope the concert last night was fun. We opened the show talking about the bad news birds. That's right, baby. The Pelicans, massive win last night. Beat the Kings on the road in Sacramento. It means that on the year, they 5 owed the Kings. That is so crazy. It's actually insane to think about that you could play an NBA team in a sport like basketball and beat them five times, especially when the fifth time both teams desperately needed it. Remember, if the Pelicans had gone 0-3 and the Kings had gone 3-0 to end the year, the Kings would end up as the sixth seed. So they had everything to play for last night. As it stands, after the win, the Pelicans now retain the sixth seed. They're up a game on the Sun, so they control their own destiny, while the Kings have now been eliminated from sixth seed contention. Later, Kings! And the Pelicans got... The Warriors tonight in Golden State. Warriors 9-1 and one in the last 10. 22-40 uh, of 40 from three last night for the Pellies. Here's to hoping you can put up a 50, 50 spot. I mean, you, you know, 50% for three is pretty good. Pretty good. Do that again. You might have a good chance of winning. Um, but there, there's like too many playoff scenarios to get into exactly right now. Just know that the Suns do end with the T-Wolves. Suns are at Kings tonight, and then they end with the T-Wolves. So, like... I kind of find it hard to believe that they'll 2-0 that stretch as well, so maybe you have margin of error. But again, uh, the 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 better way to handle this if you're the Pelicans would be to find a way to win tonight, beat the Lakers at home, finish with 50 wins, and um, build tonight on what is a franchise record. Was it 27th road win, I yeah, believe? 27 and 14. 27 road wins. No Pelican team ever been so good away from home, as is uh, this one. And like we said, I love seeing the toughness out of Zion last night. C.J. McCollum uh, continues to be incredible. Best three-point shooter in the NBA right now. Trey Murphy continues to come on huge in Brandon Ingram's absence. And then the role players with their Alvarado's uh, contributions, Dyson Daniels. Um, it just was a really fantastic performance last night. So you look at, you know, coming up, you're going to be an underdog to the Warriors. And I believe the Suns are going to be a favorite, even though they're on the road. Against the Kings. Yeah, they should be. So, well, I mean, I guess. I mean, they're, you know, pretty thought, much the well, same the, No, I thought the Suns had, well, I, I guess I said they should be. I thought the Suns have been playing better as of late. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, they're five-point favorite right now on the road against oh, that's Sacramento. Pretty big. Yeah, that's pretty big. So, it's a pretty big number just considering, you know, they're pretty much the same team and then one being at home. I think Golden State's a four-and-a-half-point favorite against the Pelicans. So, I've got more faith in the Pelicans handling their business, I guess. Like, I don't, like, the for the Kings... Now that they're eliminated from that six seed, like what's it going to look like for them tonight? Now, yeah. will they, like we talked about earlier, will they do like the Warriors and the Lakers because you're trying to jockey for playing position where it's at? Yeah, uh, I mean, they're, they're fighting. They're probably all those teams really fighting over that seven seed uh, now at this point because then you'll get two opportunities to try to get in uh, to a playoff series. But yeah, I mean, look, the, 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 let's be clear. Like the Warriors should be favored here because of their current form. 
Um, nobody's playing better basketball in the entirety of the NBA right now than are the Warriors. Uh, no chance Brandon Ingram's back tonight, right? Do we have that confirmed or not? I mean, I'm guessing it's not. I just don't know if they come Everything out is just like up in the air. Okay. So, yeah. Um, all right. We're we, we, we going to see that. We talked a little bit about uh, Kentucky hiring Mark Pope. Um, shout out to Garrett Woods in the chat who says, so now Kentucky is Mark Poops as well as Mark Poop. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. Poops and Poop really inspires confidence. Um, I still don't understand how Mark Stoops is a top 10 paid football coach. I think he might have got bumped down to like top 12 or something, but it's that's just that's crazy. And you could hear it in that Kentucky fan's uh, voice when discussing Mitch Barnhart. And for Mitch Barnhart, the Kentucky AD, this is him putting his nuts on the line again. Like your job is on the line with this hire, right? Yeah. There's no way you survive. Now, this Mitch is has your been there hire. for a long, long time. But this is his hire. I mean, he, according to KSR, Kentucky Sports Radio, they, they, like their sources are saying that it came down to it. Mitch was like, I just like him the best yeah. out of everybody else. Not not the resume. Not just and, and, and maybe it works. Again, maybe it works. But if you were a Kentucky fan, you would not feel good today. Um, but, you know, Pope is going to try to prove them wrong. Um, we got LSU spring game tomorrow, which... I don't know, Jake. What do you think the 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 current value of the spring game is? We talked about this a little bit on snaps yesterday. How much how much how much value is there in a spring game for the fans, for the players? Mm. Kind of from g- give me the different perspectives. I don't really know. I don't. Mm. I don't. I think the practices are valuable. We all know that. Mm-hmm. Um, very, but very the, much the so. game itself, I'm not sure that it's anything other than. You giving your fan base like a little teaser, a little look in before yeah. they go away for summer workouts and get ready and go to training camp and then start the season. We're not going to see anything exotic tomorrow. We're not going to see a lot of starters play for the full game. The positions that you have questions about, like defensive line, defensive tackle, and they're, they're probably going to be smart and not you know risk injury for those guys. So. Like I guess if I'm looking for a storyline, it's does the defense look functional? Mm-hmm. Or is the defensive line lining up on the line of scrimmage or a yard and a half off nah, the ball? Are the linebackers <laughs> fall stepping or are they attacking the football? Is the coverage looking like a coverage that I can say, you know what, that's quarters or that's quarter, quarter halves or that's two? Or is it gonna be like, what in the hell was that? So that like I guess you could look for, but outside of that, you know, it is what it is. I think, and, and look, if you're watching on YouTube, sorry guys, we're going to work on this ad situation. I don't know what's going on right here, but I see the cots of complaints. So just know you are heard. Um, <clears throat> I think that, uh, hit the like button. I think <laughs> that um, when it comes to value for me, uh, I think it can be a bit nuanced in some ways. Like, yes, this is not a wholly representative look of what you've been doing in practice. Uh, you are the defense is not going to run anything exotic. The offense is not going to either, um, because it is so public. Coaches kind of like to keep what you've been working on under practice, especially when you have a new staff and maybe uh, some new wrinkles like Blake Baker and company will be throwing in. They they don't want any of that tape out there for fall time, especially when you open with a game like USC in Vegas, right? They they want to keep as much information withheld as possible. Um, so in 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 some ways, you get this dumbed down generic version of it, and and that takes away some of the value, but. I also remember as a player, Richard freshman year, vying for the starting job going into Richard sophomore year, kind of struggled at portions during spring ball, got a little mentally overwhelmed. And then in this game, um, I ended up having a very good game, and partially because it was dumbed down, so the calls were yeah. easy and you could just go out there and play. Uh, but it gave me so much confidence going forward. And it actually gave the staff confidence in me going forward that um, I, I could have uh, that 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 I could maybe could eventually end up being the starter. Now I still don't think I entered camp as a starter. I think I still had to like kind of come from behind there. But I, I just remember, um, although it was not what we had been doing, I, I just remember uh, gaining like it, it had value to me. Is all I'm saying. So on a on a personal level, on a player to player level, there are strides to be made here. And if you're a fan watching, there are things that you can still hang your hat on. Like if Kyron Lacy goes up and catches a fade in the corner of the end zone, like one-handed and toe taps. Like that's a great individual play that can carry over to the regular season. If Deshaun Womack just straight up beats Will Campbell or Emory Jones on a pass rush, like that's a play that is made that can carry over to the regular season. So I'm kind of looking like, like, uh, okay, a running back. 
is a running back going to bust out like an impressive like 40-yard run, which is great vision. Like those sort of mm-hmm. things can carry over and can be representative of what you get into. So it's not devoid of value. It's just, you know, it's just a little... It's just a little less than. It's not, it's not a true game. It's not even a true practice in some ways. But also, though, you do get the adrenaline of people in the stands, which does change things, right? Even if it's only like 10,000, you're still not used to playing yeah. in front of anybody. So when you're a young cat and you get your first opportunity in Tiger Stadium, I'll never forget looking up at the Jumbotron and like seeing the replay. And that was the first time in my life I'd ever played offensive football where I could do that and be yeah. like, whoa, that's pretty crazy, dude. Yeah. There's some of that. And you'll notice that, obviously, within the team. And I, the practices are very important. So I don't want to sound like spring's not important. The practices are highly important. Yeah. And, and certainly when you have all the new that LSU has, and you have, like, basically your entire signing class that's already here, like, it's important for those guys to be able to get that work. It's important for Garrett Nussmeyer to be the leader for a spring, being yep. the starter. All, like, all those things are very important. I just don't know how much, you know, tomorrow you're going to see. But it is a great point. There's individual guys that are – looking to take that next step that they can go out there and they can make that play that maybe gives them what they need yes. for the all season, gives them kind of that juice they need going into the all season. So there's certainly things to watch. And I was just like you. I mean, I was fighting for my spot in, in spring as well. Like when I was moving from fullback to running back, like every spring I had to go out there and win that job. And so it's valuable. There's a lot of value to it. We'll see how much of that we actually see tomorrow, though, inside Tiger Stadium. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, mainly I'm just looking for who's going to make good individual plays. Like, which receiver is going to go and put up numbers, or vice versa. Like, which which DB, if he's man up, can hang with these receivers? Um, will we see some of the P.J. Woodland hype play out? Will we see some of the Ashton Stamps hype play out? Uh, will in and again a dumbed down role like, but having Major Burns at the star, do you feel that? Do you feel say dry? And so there's there's certainly things to watch. What time's the game tomorrow? The game is at noon. Okay, I'm not having to work at T, so I have no idea. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> um, God, can you imagine being a Georgia Bulldog assistant coach? Like you commit your life to working twenty four seven for Kirby. You're paid well, but you know your existence is every day calling seventeen thousand teams and having to just like bow at the feet of these teams. But the one thing is, because you are a Georgia football assistant coach, you can go to the Masters. Like you can get tickets to Augusta because you are tied in, and then that a hole Kirby Smart puts the spring game on Masters weekend. He did it on purpose. I know he did. Um, I have it on good authority that many of the coaches are pretty bummed out. I could imagine. <laughs> yeah, uh, I heard Mike Bobo's not very happy right no, now. No, I do not think Mike Bobo is uh, is very pleased, according to our source, Aaron Murray. But, yeah, man, like all the all the grind. And this would, this is like if you're a Georgia football coach specifically, this is one of the best benefits that you have is you could get into that most exclusive of clubs and get to go watch, and instead, you're going to be doing a spring game. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean anything to you. And you know what you're going to have to do after the spring game? You're going to have to go suck off some teens. Ugh, terrible. At like a barbecue or something. And you got to remember their parents' names. And you got to remember their girlfriends' names. Maybe you're even pulling some strings to get Jolie into school. You know, just terrible, terrible, terrible. God, money's good, but coaching, not for me. You know what? Honestly, that's not even a part of it that I think about, but you're right. Like, this recruit, who you maybe get, maybe you don't, I got to know that his parents are Mark and Gloria. Yes. It's so hard. And I hate, I can't remember <laughs> names to save my life. No. Like, I, that sounds terrifying to me. I would need I would need like a like an earpiece in yeah. with the impractical jokers just constantly feeding me information though they of course would feed me the wrong info so probably not them. Um, mm, 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 mm. Have fun, Georgia. All right, we we'll get back. Great time. Uh, I do want to get some of this Brian Kelly sound though, so we'll do it on the other side of this break. Keep it locked, OTB. Off the bench with Hester and T Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and eleven thirty the Tiger. Mm. AT&T, stop texting me about fixing the internet. Fix it. Ah, uh, get Gordon, get it done today. 225-888-8888. Uh, listen up. If you are a high school graduating senior class 2024, you want to go to gordongives.com where you can find details on how to enter win one of 12 laptops that we are giving away throughout the entire state of Louisiana. 
So, uh, again, that's GordyGibbs.com. If you're a graduating senior, go check it out. Go see how to enter to win. Uh, if you're not a graduating senior, you just go follow Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys at Get Gordon on social media. Uh, where, look, you're going to get great access to uh, the G team, a lot of your favorite athletes. It's great content about how to protect yourself, what you do in an accident. And ultimately, that's why you need Gordon, right? Somebody's going to fight for you and get you what you deserve. Get Gordon. Get it done. When you go to that website, you'll see past client results, cases they can handle for you. You can get a consultation set up on the website. You can get your question answered on the website. Great tool for you. Get Gordon.com. But always pick up the phone in Louisiana, your area code, followed by 888 our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. a mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after-hours emergency. Matt Moscona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR, presented by Don. Juan Cigar Bar. Preview in LSU, Tennessee, the Tigers' spring game. We'll recap Pell's Kings. Join us Friday's AFR 36, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. It feels good to be a gangster. A real gangster type player plays his cards right. A real gangster type player. Never... All Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Uh, Nyquil says, Screw being a coach. What are y'all doing all that? I'll be watching Spring Game, the Masters, start Berlin at two, baseball, hang out by the pool, UFC 300. That's how you Saturday. It does sound like a great Saturday. Um, still, some people are going to be out there. 
in Death Valley watching this football team. And Brian Kelly met with the media yesterday. Let's start with Mason Taylor here. As uh, we talked about a Joe Sloan quote in which he basically said that, look, Mason Taylor is going to be a feature piece of this offense. Should have taken more advantage of him even last year. And again, you look at these stats from the ReliQuest Bowl. I think it was 7 for 88. Um, so, and we, we talked about trying to make up for the Jaden Daniels rushing production, right? That gets funneled into multiple different areas. Uh, Mason Taylor would appear to be a great candidate to be one of said funnels. Uh, here's what Brian Kelly had to say about his third year tight end. He's a player that we're going to count on much more than we did last year. I mean, he's going to be a central figure in what we do. And, and Garrett looks to him as well. And so I, I think that in this offense, the tight end will be featured quite regularly. There you go. So Macy Taylor can make huge strides. Also, um, I'm expecting a lot of two tight end sets with Mac Markway as he's going to be kind of your lead blocking tight end. But again, as we saw in the bowl game, um, has some skill receiving as well. The wild cards pimped him. Um, from what I read on Pimpton, he just feels unrefined thus far. Um, who, who's the, uh, is it Slade? Who's the tight ends coach right now? Yeah, Slade, Slade Nagel. Yeah, Slade Nagel. Uh, he was basically talking about how, you know, Pimpton needs to get a little more crisp on his routes. He's kind of thinking a little too much. He needs to drive into them with more force. So it sounds like Pimpton's maybe not quite ready just yet. Yeah, and when you look at it, I mean, you've got your F and you've got your Y. Yeah. Uh, I think you've got two tight ends that you really like, and if he can come along, that's great. They give you little lanyard there at the position. I think the most important thing is is when BK said and Garrett looks for him, mm-hmm. talking about Mason Taylor. Mm-hmm. Like you can have it within the offense, but if it's not something that is in your sight line, if it's not something where it's, you know, progression, progression, check down, a lot of times that tight end can be that check down. Yeah. And, you know, Mason Taylor's been that in the past. He wasn't last year, but he didn't have to be last year. I mean, you had two first round receivers yeah. and you were making hay down the field. You had the best deep ball thrower. Uh, in college football last year, but like that's going to be important for for Nussmeyer. It's a part of his growth that it continues to develop each and every year. It's you know him actually knowing when to check down, when to take chances, when to air it out. Because when he first got here, and we all loved it, right? I mean, he was he was the gunslinger. He was I'm going to throw it down the field and see if my guy can go make a play. And there's times to do that, but also you got to be smart with the football and you got to check it down. And Mason Taylor is a great receiving tight end. Uh, you probably gonna see that tomorrow too, to be clear. I think, I think Nuss can be taking some shots <laughs> with uh, Lacey and the boys. So I look forward to that. Um, so one name that uh, continues to pop up unbidden and, and, and Taylor talked about this, having guests on, when we were out uh, during spring break and that the, the name that people kept mentioning without being led there uh, was Deshaun McBride, the safety out of Denham Springs, who is an early enrollee who should be getting ready for prom right now. And yet everybody continues to talk about him in terms of guys who are just jumping off of the, off of the page or off of the field when it comes to spring ball. Here's what Brian Kelly had to say about his freshman safety. McBride, on the other hand, is um, rangy, athletic, and he's a guy that's going to factor in. He's one that you'll see a lot of, right, on on Saturday. And we're excited about his future. I think he's got a bright future, so you'll see a lot of him on on Saturday. Um, What does that do for you, Jake, hearing that about McBride? That's good. I mean, that's why you're here. That's why you're not going to prom. Yeah. That's why you're in spring practice. It's to get that first look at what it's like to play college football at a, at a major level. It's a chance for the coaches to see how you stack up. And I really feel like now there's going to be some players maybe that come in the summer and they're going to have the ability to kind of, I guess, wow you in that short period of time to be able to get on the field, but maybe not as soon as if you came into spring practice and you do it. You've had plenty. You've fourth quarter in yeah, spring. Yeah, it's, it's tough to not enroll early and play It early, is. I feel like. And so, like, now – like with a player like that, like you go into summer workouts thinking they can help you. With the other players, they're just getting here for the first time at summer workouts, and you're like, I don't know. And then during camp, you try to figure it out. And then like week six, maybe you figure out that they can help you. I just wonder, does any kids ever show up expecting not to play anymore? Like I definitely was like, oh, I ain't playing. I'm chilling for like at least a year. I had, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I had no, I really, I really didn't have any idea. I had no clue what it was going to be, but you're right. I mean, I was like, I'm a red that. shirt. I'm kind of yeah. acclimate, get bigger, stronger, kind of, you know, scout team, learn the game. Like yeah. I had no intention whatsoever of playing freshman year. Yeah. I mean, guys, red, like Tyson Jackson red shirted in our class and he was like a top five pick. Yeah. It just like kind of what it was, unless it was a need or unless you were just like Glenn Dorsey, like you were going to red shirt. 
Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's wild how, how it's changed in that regard. Well, it was it was probably more common then because like now you get the four games and you can still redshirt. Back then, like you play one game, you're done. So like yeah, you didn't play at all. So now really it's like knew. oh, we could throw them in against Grambling, Georgia State, all that, and still preserve the redshirt. So like you do see more people playing now. Poor guys, though, they're they're gonna miss out on the joy that is growing up an LSU fan, and then being on the sideline for games, but knowing you're not going to go in. So essentially, you just have sideline passes. I mean, I used to put my gloves on my belt and I would fill them with sunflower seeds. And right when we would get out there, I would put my helmet behind the bench and I'd just be chilling, munching seeds, watching the game with a front row seat to a national championship. It was awesome. I mean, after growing up a diehard LSU fan, I just got sideline passes for an entire year. It was sick. <laughs> sideline passes. You're on the team. Stop it. I'll never, I'll never forget. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean, two-time scout team player of the week. Forget uh, be us. Also, shout out my guy Go Edits yesterday on Twitter, bringing up that never forget the 2012 LSU Tigers uh, on the on, on the EA uh, video game um, on NCAA, uh, highest rated player on the team of the 92. Your boy Mo Kleber 90, Brandon Taylor 90, Ruben Randall 90, uh, Will Blackwell 88, Tyron Matthew 87, Mettenberger 85, Eric Reed 85, Russell Shepard 85. Hey. Look at that unit right there, dude. Look at that unit. You see that man live. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. But it's an old picture of me in my playing days. See that man lined up across from you. You know you're in for trouble. T-Bob. That man's going to drag you out in the deep and see if you can swim. That man doesn't even look related to you. Yeah, because he's beautiful. He has mass. You know? Dude could bench 445 pounds. Like no a boss. swag. No, nothing on his arms. Um, well, to be clear, that was not my game day fit. I would load up my right arm with like an elbow pad I didn't need. I would spat my thumb for no reason. Uh, but I would keep my left arm clean, my snap hand. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, I'd load that right up with just junk, basically. Flare. Yeah, flare, flare wristband, yeah. which I did actually use for uh, for drying the hands. Yeah, sweating purposes. And whatnot. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, you without a beard looks so weird so now. So weird now. I know. Yeah. I can't believe I'm going to have to get this stupid F-boy fade in a month, dude. Like, what is that? Is that the haircut you used to get, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but I so. love my hair right now. I I know I have a hat on today, but, like, I've hit a portion of my hair where I, my hair, I'm, I've never been more confident in it. It's got this wonderful flow and shape, and it just, like, makes me so happy. Get complimented all the time. And now I've got to take it down to basically, like, a zero on the is sides. Is there anything? Can you, can you go back and can you be like, look, what if I no. shave my face no. with a razor? No. Every single day. Chat is on my ass oh, okay. on snaps about doing it, yeah. and I keep pushing back, and I'm pushing back again another couple weeks. It's gonna, but but like May twelfth, it's gonna. That's the week when it has to happen, unfortunately. So, I mean, will it grow back? That's all I want to know. Will it grow back? I yeah. think it will grow back, but I I do think your shape is so good right now, and know, the, you it, freaked it, me out with that Texas, and, and the flow just flows, and you can just run your fingers through it, and it kind of just falls into place. It's going to take a while to get well, back. His issue is like what he's going to have to do is once the sides grows back out, he's going to have to trim the top a little bit to well, match I'm not the worried about that. Like, but it, it all. So that's one of the things I'm making myself feel better about is I really trust my guy, Troy Mercer. And so I'm, I'm, I'm treating this almost like I'm giving him like a freshly born babe with which to raise, right? So he can shave it along the next few months. But So he knows. Uh, yeah, he you've knows. already made him aware. Yeah, I've already made him aware. Okay, I'm bummed about it. That's no, good. I mean, it's good that he's getting a plan together. Um, here is speaking of plans, Brian Kelly talking about the wide receivers outside of Kyron Lacey. Chris Hinton's had a really good spring. You know, I've talked about Kyron, but Chris Hinton's been really solid for us. I think the last week, CJ Daniels has really settled in nicely. You can see his veteran kind of experience starting to show as he gets more comfortable within our offense. There's a lot of depth. I think Aaron Anderson's had a really good spring for us, and he'll contribute to what we're doing. I think Samson's had a good spring. I just like the depth of the wide receiver core in itself. There's probably Probably seven, seven guys that can contribute. Dude, I didn't know Chris Hinton played on this team. This O line's even stronger than I realized, dude. Hell yeah. Uh, no, it could be clear he meant Chris Hilton. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Hinton, the actual Chris Hinton, used to play tackle back in the day with my old man. Yeah, there you go. Led through the game. Um, so that, that, that's definitely something to watch uh, tomorrow, though. Wh which receivers outside of Kyron Lacey are going to assert themselves and who's going to end up. Uh, 
who's going to end up being those twos and threes. That's not a position I really worry about at LSU until it makes me worry about it. Um, like I can't go back in the memory yeah, bank yeah, and, and think of a time well, where LSU didn't have. It's funny because two years ago I was a hater. Remember, like one of my off-season takes going into the last year was like, prove it. We spent two years talking about how good wide receivers are, and I feel like they haven't really lived up to it. But you bring in Cortez Hankton, and since Cortez Hankton, they've been incredible. So as long as Hankton is still here, I'm I'm with you. Like I'm not I'm not worried about the position, even though I was. Um, two years ago would have been right. Like you talking about right after you lost. I when Kayshawn was, I guess, your number one. The Jonathan Giles year. Let's not talk about that. Uh, <laughs> number seven. Uh, e- even even with that though, like that may be your weakest receiver room because you had Chark, who was your your guy, but outside of him, you didn't well, have DJ, anybody. DJ was a dude in college, but somebody always steps up. Russell Gage stepped up yeah, that year. He did. Derek Dillon made a ton of plays for you that year. Like 18, yeah. coming into the year, you didn't feel that great about receiver, but somebody always steps up. Yeah. Well, you've always had NFL talent in that room. Like you always have guys make it in the league. It just uh, sometimes they didn't perform in college. Uh, again, though. If you look at what happened to Georgia's receivers post Cortez Hankton and what happened to LSU's, that gives me a lot of faith because Georgia yes. took a nosedive and LSU skyrocketed. Yeah, Georgia um, lost receivers. I mean, the guys that were there went other places and even flourished. I mean, look at A.D. Mitchell. Uh, Gulf South says, could be worse, T-Bob. You all said you castrate yourself on live TV if you lost another bet. Yeah, I did. I forgot who the bet was, though. I mean, I'm sure it was a solid one because, you know, I don't want to do that. Obviously. Although I kind of did already in some ways. Shout out Dr. Cockrell. All right. When we get back, um, oh, yeah, it was Florida winning the SEC championship. That's right. I'll double down. I will castrate myself live on OTB if the Florida Gators win the football SEC championship next year. Okay. I will I will hire. I will let Taylor do it. You can do it how my uncle did them goats back in the day. Just take a straight razor and spray some disinfectant after. I'm in. Don't you make me pull for Florida this year, T-Bob. Don't make me do it. <laughs> Look at you. You're messed up in the head. You want to do that? Uh, yes, he just jumped on the opportunity. Yeah, look at him, dude. You're a freak, Taylor. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> really do it in LP? Okay, dude. <laughs> All right, when we get back, more Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and ah, T-Bob. That's true. We sent Nathan to France that one time. The GoFundMe to go to Cannes, and he never dyed his hair. Oh, man, that. that's yeah, that's like an expensive trip, too. K to Z Windows, K-T-O-Z Blinds.com, K-T-O-Z Blinds.com. They always told me that if I kept doing it, I was going to go blind. Never happened, though, okay? So they don't know what they're talking about. You know who does? Me. And that's why I'm telling you to get those window coverings that wow by going to K to Z and getting Brandon Barton's decades worth of experience. He's going to walk into your home Give you a free estimate, a great breakdown of exactly how the light interacts with your home and bring your home, be it a starter or home of your dreams, all price points, okay? Bring your home to the next level. You can still see? Uh, still see, dude. Oh, wow. Well, you'll see the difference worse, to be uh, fair. from K-, K to C when they come into your home. And we tell you all the time, I mean, Brandon and the team, they're going to learn your space like in five minutes and know exactly what you need. You don't even know you need it. They'll know you need it. K to Z blinds.com, K to Z blinds.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more.
It's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking 22500 off the new 23 Ram 1500 SCA truck. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking 22500 off the new Ram 1500 truck. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. On Friday's OTB, did the Pels manage to get it done in a must win out west? Plus, final prep for LSU baseball's trip to Knoxville. Back against the wall. And some champagne shenanigans. Off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. I'm expressing with my full capabilities And now I'm living in correctional facilities Cause some don't agree with how I do this I get straight and meditate like a Buddhist I'm dropping flavor, my behavior is hereditary But my technique is very necessary Blame it on Ice Cube Because he said it gets funky When you got a subject and a predicate All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Okay, dude, here you go. Uh, The Mark Pope era, this comes from Tyler Thompson, Miss Tyler KSR. The Mark Pope era in Kentucky off to a good start in NIL with a $4 million pledge from two boosters. Also, Pope's former teammates and others from the Patino and Tubby airs are voicing their support. Hell yeah. Um, again, again, I, I, I know I'm being a bit, um, a bit mean about the whole thing, but Pope could end up being very good. I just also believe that Kentucky fans do not have to, nor should they be excited about this on the surface. It could work. It really could. But, um, but if you were a Kentucky fan, like a diehard Kentucky basketball fan, you'd be pretty annoyed. I would say right now. Uh, yeah, there's, there's no way that you could feel good about this. Until you're proven wrong. Yeah, until you're proven wrong. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a fine, I mean, that is a fine, very level-headed and 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 uh, completely within your rights take to to have. Um, man, I've got some really good, mind-blowing geographic facts coming up for Hour 3, y'all. So look forward to that. we got Champagne Shenanigans. We're going to kick off the weekend right. Uh, anybody watch any Masters yesterday? Do we have any golf heads? Any, I any did. link heads in here? Yeah, I did because uh, I was actually uh, flying back yesterday uh, from a vacation. So uh, that's pretty much all I did was was watch on that. the plane. Yeah, on the plane, nice. and then, then also I had a five hour layover. Hell yeah! Uh, so I watched it uh, during that as well. Layover. I I will say this, um, and I guess this is almost like all things. Once you start having a bunch of kids, but man, when you're solo on a layover, it just feels so good. Just chilling, just do whatever you want, drinking yeah. beers, hang out. And catch a nap, watch some, watch some TV in the bar, talk to some random people, yep. watch some masters. Not a bad place to be. I just like to walk sometimes around the airport. Really? Yeah, if I got like a little, explore? a little layover, I'm just huh. going to walk. I don't take the, the tram. I usually just walk. Yeah, oh, really? Uh, yeah. I'm a big airport walker. Yeah. Um, well, you're from there. <laughs> That's true. I have no... Re- yeah, I mean... Um, what about, uh, so Bryson DeChambeau leading the tournament? Yeah, the but look, I was... The meathead nerd back? Yeah. I was watching yesterday. Scotty Scheffler's coming. 
Um, he looked really good yesterday. He's only well, he one stroke behind now. You never, yeah, exactly. you, you never yeah, so want to be. Leave it any time. You never want to be in the lead in the first round. Okay, exactly. So, exactly. so, so yeah. I was going to say for somebody who's supposed to be pretty nerdy into Shambo, have you all ever played Settlers of Catan? Yeah. Uh, this is like jumping out to an early lead in Catan. Yeah, you never want to do all that. All you do is paint a giant target on your back where nobody's yep. going to trade with you. Everybody's yep. going to try to block your expansion. Like everybody is going to team up against you. Well, you got some big names creeping up. Like I mentioned, Shuffler's six under. The Shambo's seven, so Shuffler's right behind him. You got a couple of big names that are like four and five under as well. Like they're they're coming for him. Where did Rory Rory finish? I think two two under. So well, that's actually yeah. his best opening round ever at Augusta. So well within striking distance. Yep. Uh, of course, because it's a golf update, you have to do the Tiger thing. He's one under. Um, one under, but through thirteen. Oh well, so, yeah, no, I think he's they. He just finished his first round. Oh, I he think, just finished I, just yeah, now, and he's he finished the first round of one over. Oh, one ah, over. Okay, okay. So, so he fell he's apart in those final bit. five holes. Yeah. yeah, no, so he got in thirteen yesterday uh, because of the weather. They had the two hour delay start, so he had to wait. Crazy day too with all the wind gusts and everything. Can't imagine. It's going to be beautiful the rest of the weekend, but. He got in 13, so he just played five. Takes a little break. Now he has to go play 18 more. Yeah. Tough on an old body. The wind, the it's wind actually. Had a lot on it. The wind, you, and you would expect to, oh, yeah, it's it's the early morning. Usually the wind's not as bad, but it actually was still blowing really hard mm. this morning. So it didn't even really help him that much to be able to play early. And now he's got to come back in a couple of hours or maybe God, less than an uh, hour. That's so frustrating if you think about playing 13, fighting your way to one under, and then you come back for five the next day and finish one over. Yeah. Yep. It's a, a huge bummer. Our guy Sam Burns didn't have a great day. No. That's why he's pregnant. He's, he's distracted. Plus, plus eight. Damn. Yesterday shot an 80. I mean, how are you supposed to golf when you got 20 mile an hour wind gusts going on, dude? It's crazy. Um, how did Ricky Fowler end up doing? I know he won the par three competition. He, so. Yeah, he he finished, he shot four four over seventy six. So yeah. and and yeah, and Hideki Matsuyama also former Masters chain four over. A lot of guys. Dustin Johnson five over. A lot, a lot of top top guys struggling uh, right now. Hmm. Um, do you have opinions on who you think is going to win, Beck? I think it's going to be Sky Shuffer. He, he's he's outside of Shevlin because yeah, I know he's, yeah. he's the number one golfer in the world for him. Yeah, favorite. But it's it's not even just it's not even just that. But also, it, it, I follow a lot of guys on Twitter that that do they get in deep into the golf stats. Like he's hitting the ball almost as good as Tiger Woods was hitting it when he was like dominating. Like his irons are. are He's almost hitting it. His strokes gained. Oh, you're off talking the like so the analytics, like the you're analytics saying, stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, are saying like that his, he's like near prime his, Tiger. His strokes gained off the tee are is almost is almost equal to Tiger was in his prime. So. Yeah. So something uh, the other day it was like his tee shot and his short game yeah, yeah. rank like one and two of all golfers in like his last ten tournaments. He struggled with his putting, but he changed his putter. So like that's getting better now too. So it just all the all the analytics really do. Like side with Scheffler, like big. Yep. Work up, Scotty. Uh, until his wife goes into labor on Sunday and he has to leave. It's gonna be rough. Mm. Um, all right. So day two of the Masters. If, look again, if you're if you're uh, if you love golf, man, enjoy this time. This is your time. Um, if you're feeling old, you should enjoy a trip to Rejuvenate Medical, where you're gonna go get your labs drawn, uh, and that's gonna be the guide to them creating a custom plan for you to get you where you want to be, right? They treat the untreated effects of aging. This could be anything from andropause, menopause, facial aging, mood and memory problems, insomnia. You don't have the energy you used to have. Weight gain, that's weird. You're not seeing the results from your workouts like you used to. Um, certainly exercise, diet, all these things help, but they can be a part of a larger plan. And, and you me can help you put together said plan. Like maybe HRT is for you. Maybe it's not. Uh, maybe semaglutide is for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just B vitamin shots. The point is they get a ton of options over there at Rejuvame. So go in today, get your labs drawn, and let them customize a plan for you where your body is the guy. And in Baton Rouge, Metairie, Slidell, uh, Shreveport, and now Monroe uh, as well. Shout out Rejuvame Medical. Um, okay, do you do y'all want one of the geographic facts earlier here? You didn't say who you're rooting for in the Masters. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't have a no rooting interest. I don't have a dog in the fight, man. Sure. I haven't watched the Netflix PGA show. Otherwise, I probably would have somebody. I mean, from what I did see of that show, Scotty Scheffler seems pretty chill and likable. All right. I've always been a big Spieth guy, but he's been bad in majors lately. So Spieth, Spieth had a, I think he had like an eight or a yeah. nine. He had a nine on a fifteen. So yeah, he's, that's he's what struggled in big ones lately. Me out about golf. Is... You can get any. There's no limit to the score you can get on a hole. Well, I never thought about that, but yes, that is kind of freaky to think yeah. about. If you just go full tilt, you can yeah, you hit in the water yeah. three times. You're gonna um, like... another one. <laughs> but uh, but no, it's like 
What freaks me out about, out about golf is just how wide ranging the same person's performance can be even close to one another. Yeah. yeah. Where one week and you're just feeling it. It's kind of how I feel about chess. Like I like I'm I'm just playing like god awful chess right now, you know? And it's weird. So I feel like I'm trying to study more. I'm trying to do these good things and I'm just not seeing it. Yeah. Just yeah. making dumb moves, can't see it. It just feels like I'm in a fog constantly and and then you have a guy like Speeth who at one point in his career nearly won the career grand slam mm -hmm. in the same in a single same calendar year. year. Yeah. yeah. Even 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 a guy like Rory he hasn't yeah. he hasn't won a major in in, in over 5 years and in and, and for when he was younger in the early 2010s, it was like, oh, this guy's going to win 15, yeah. ma 10 majors. I don't know, something like well, that. Well, I mean, like, and then it took Phil forever, and then what? He rattled off a few. Yeah. He almost ended up with a career. Won the, P Grand yeah, Slam. Won the PGA when he was 50. It was just crazy. Um. So, yeah, I, I you know, golf's, golf's crazy, man. But no, I got no. Do you have a root interest? Uh, you got a betting interest? I'm no. I'm guessing you do. No, nah, God, no. Oh, not, really? Not golf. Oh, okay. uh, Tommy Fleetwood, Evertonian. Ah, Tommy yes. Fleetwood, another. He's playing pretty. He's major, playing pretty right? well. Playing he's, pretty uh, well. He's he's two under through sixteen. He's also finishing his round. So okay, forget. He's tied for eighth. Two under in the first round. I mean, that, yeah, you're within. You're setting yourself I, I, up. I, I, I want to say all the winners have been within five of the leader. Something like that. After day yeah. one, there's some stat like that out there. So he's right there yeah. at that. Uh, I mean, he's such a, he's such an Everton fan. Like his clubs, like his irons, have EFC with like a blue stone. So you're oh, telling yeah. me it's no shock that he hasn't won a major then. Exactly. <laughs> he, like, he, like, he, likes, he likes pain. Yeah. He enjoys yeah. pain. Yeah. Uh, not, a front runner. Yeah, not a front runner. Not a front runner. Starring Tommy Fleetwood. Yeah. Uh, all right. When we get back, closing on hour two, then Champagne Shenanigans. Keep it locked off the bench. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Go to allstartoyotabatonrouge.com. Allstartoyotabatonrouge.com. Uh, look, man, it's your one-stop vehicular shop, Okay. Uh, you need a new vehicle. Maybe you want a Toyota certified used vehicle or you still get excellent warranty coverage. Maybe you need a lease. Um, it's all there for you. So is the body shop and the service shop. Does not need to be a Toyota. Okay, all makes and models welcome. You go in, you get a free estimate, excellent lines of communication, shuttle service right there on site to drop you off and pick you up from wherever you got to be. Uh, and rental cars are available for cheaper per day rental prices than your traditional rental company. Just hit up our girl, Miss Lisa Sessions. Go to Allstar Toyota Baton Rouge, allstartoyotabatonrouge.com. Hey, go to that website today to find out what uh, is going to fit your lifestyle and what's going to fit your needs because they got something for every lifestyle and, and all the needs, right? So if it's a midsize SUV, multiple options, multiple trucks, multiple hybrids, I mean, you get it. They've got more than just one option over at Allstar, available in all the processes we take about every single day. Allstar Toyota at BatonRouge.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Secret in Town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at SunEquip.com. Dot com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. 
What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded. Join us for the Friday edition of Live at Lunch from Rafino's on Highland Road. We'll keep you up to date on everything going on at the Masters and preview LSU versus Tennessee in college baseball. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Friday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to OTB. Uh, Jake, if there's one thing that I know that you love in this life, it is running the ball. Uh, right now, you have your in fullbacks, we trust shirt. And well, it's something the New Orleans Saints are going to seek to get better at next season. Uh, they have actually not one, but two fullbacks on the roster currently. Yeah. Right. And again, oh, I don't know if you knew this, but Kubiak was with San Francisco last year, and they got a pretty good fullback, so it should be pretty good down here. Yeah, uh, he beat me out for the uh, All Senior Bowl team. Damn, um, I got second. Pathetic. Not you, Kyle. Yeah, and his wife and her stupid yeah, jackets. Yeah, dude went to Harvard, makes a Pro Bowl, makes Super Bowls yeah, all the time. Leave some for the rest of us, dude. Jesus. Um, but, okay, so the point is, though, the Saints are going to be looked to improve in that area, and yet they may need not one but two new offensive tackles come draft time. And we bandied about a bunch of the names. One name that we haven't touched a ton on is Talise Fuaga. And uh, the reason why this is starting to make the rounds in Saints circles is because Pro Football Focus le- re- uh, recently put out uh, an analysis of Fuaga where he kind of comped to uh, Ryan Ramchick and his tape. Coming out of college. And I'll read an excerpt here. Uh, say, Joe Alt is most universally thought of as the best all-around tackle in this draft. But uh, Talese Fuaga finished 2023 as the nation's best run blocker by a pretty wide margin. Uh, goes on to say, after the past two years, Fuaga played the second most run snaps among Power 5 tackles and ranked fourth in that same group with an 88-1 run blocking grade in zone concepts. Uh, only current Browns tackle Dwan Jones was better among primary right tackles. So, um, as the Saints look to uh, look to replace Ryan Ramchick, as the Saints look to get better at outside zone, yeah. maybe reignite some of Alvin Kamara, Oregon State Swaga feels like somebody who needs to be in the mix there for that first round pick. I just want to see the Saints say, hey, here's who we're going to be offensively. Here's what we're going to run. Here's going to be the schemes that we run. And one, actually have multiple running schemes and not just inside zone. But also, if you're going to do those things, like, hey, we are going to go way up in our outside zone runs. Okay, great. Go get someone who has done that in the past. Somebody that has shown you that he can do that and he can do it at a high level. And I'm talking about from the guard position, the tackle position, uh, depending on what tight end you want to go in there, certainly yeah. your running back. I want everybody to be on the same page and do something that they do well if you're going to do it. Because why would you line up and do something you're not good at? Because the Saints have done that in the past. It has not worked well for them. They tried to make Alvin Kamara you know, run between the tackles only, like yeah. exclusively. That is not who he is. Can dem, he do dem, it? Dem. Yes, but you got to give something. You have to show the defense that, hey, we will attack you on the edge. They didn't do that a year ago. So I'm just ready for everyone to get on the same page. And some of these tackles in this draft, actually, they grew up in the outside zone world where yeah, it's something like, that they like know Fuaga. very well. Like nobody, I mean, what, what is it? He, uh, I want to say over 300 outside zone snaps, it was saying um, 
yeah, ranked third among right tackles over 300 zone reps. So, uh, look, I, I think I think one of the overall takeaways here is as well, are we now all in agreement that the Saints are 100% taking an offensive tackle? Yes. Right? Yep. Like, there is no – this is I don't know if I've ever seen this before. I've covered the Saints for many, many years now, um, over a decade now at this point, actually. And I, I so I guess this would be probably the 10th or 11th draft that I've covered. I don't think I've ever seen it where we basically know the position they're going to have to go to. And, and it makes sense because of your needs, and there's a lot of available talent there, especially all the quarterbacks that are going to go off the board early. But, yeah, it will be a tackle. I guess the question is who, and if you haven't thought about Fuaga yet, he is someone to keep on your radar. I think there's five – day one starting tackles in this draft. Damn. And I think you'll be able to choose from three, four, five. Yeah, that makes sense. First two probably are going to be gone, but still like three, four, five are starting quality tackles in this draft. Go take one. Don't overthink it. Uh, Taylor Cowboys cheerleading tryouts going on. So do you need to go? Uh, that yeah. Today? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm actually heading out tomorrow. I'm, okay, cool. I, I, was, I had a first round bye. I'm already in the second round of really? cuts. Really? Yeah, I uh, tried out uh, remotely via Zoom. Off okay. the bench with Hester and T Bob. Well, good luck. Um, I hope you get it. Uh, because if you join the squad, nothing would ruin it quicker. And so the continued downfall of the Cowboys would uh, continue. Go to Akitim Baton Rouge. I'm going to continue to tell you about Akitim every single day uh, because I believe him. You want to take control of your comfort zone? Somebody's going to give you that service to the highest degree. You want to go to Akatemp of Baton Rouge. Uh, it's ain't just lip service, y'all. They walk that walk, and I mean it. You're going to work with them. You're going to be blown away. You're going to see with thousands of Google reviews how they have a 4-9 proud partner of LSU Athletics. Akatemp Baton Rouge. AkatempBR.com. Go to the website today. Get that appointment already scheduled. I think it's top right corner of the website. Schedule online. And you do it, and look, I've done it before, and they've literally beaten me to my house before I could get there from studio. They are ready and waiting on you to fix that issue or just check on your system today. Go to the website, AccutantBR.com, AccutantBR.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, 
Our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. on Friday, April 12th. Today in Baton Rouge, expect sunny skies with a high of 80. And hour three of today's show, Rivers Huey stops by the studio for a full hour of champagne shenanigans. If you missed hours one or two of the show, you can catch them in the on-demand section at 1045ESPN.com. You can also follow us on Twitter or Instagram at OTB underscore ESPN. And watch us on YouTube at the 1045 ESPN channel. Hour number three of Off the Bench, live from the Mercedes-Benz of Bad Ridge Studios, starts now. Where we go? All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Jacob Hester and T-Bob Hebert. Yeah, 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 yeah! Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Hey, they said I gotta come off the bench. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's happening, yo? It is... Friday, 9 a.m., which means champagne shenanigans are back on the table. No mid-show beer run this week. The Taylor did a great job with that last Friday. Uh, we have champagne back. And who made this bottle, Rivers? If you're watching yes. online, this is pretty incredible. Can we get a zoom in here, Taylor? Um, okay, so her name Can is you do Mary your job quickly Cassidy? for once? Mary Cassidy, yeah. or you might know her as Mary Colvin. Mary Colvin Cassidy. She has a... Um, a business called Revelry Design. Ooh. And so she paints um, alcohol bottles for you for different occasions. So a lot of people will do it for like, if you're buying a house, like they'll paint your house on it. Or you can really do it for anything, but, uh, weddings, birthdays, whatever. But my book club had a pickleball tournament. Yeah. And the best dressed won this bottle. And, you know, oh, the girl wow, likes to okay, dress up. Dude. I like to, I like a theme. I like yeah. to get involved. Yeah, well, yeah, your book club is the definition of uh, extra as we talked about. Okay, so we got a lot on the docket for um, Champagne Shenanigans today. Uh, we're also going to check in with Alondra just for like two minutes real quick before she gets on a plane. She's going to give us her UFC 300 parlay. I'm bummed. Uh, she loves Vuv. I know. I was thinking of her as Vuv I brought this. Clicko. Uh Yeah, good champagne, too, to start a Friday with. Hell yeah, we love to see it. Um, we've got some fun facts about the Masters to get into from a guy, Joe Pompliano. Um we have, I have some uh, mind-blowing geographical facts. They're all mind-blowing to you. Um, th- th- if you can read, if you if these are not mind-blowing to you, then I don't know. No, You're I'm just a smarter saying, like, man than I am. It's just not your strongest place to be. Hell no, it's my dumbest place to be. I'm a yeah. geographical dumbass. <laughs> I try uh, to say it a but, little bit nicer than that. But, but I think even the geographical smarties are going to be surprised by these fun facts. And then, um, in honor of Mississippi State's catcher, kneeing that dude in the ribs and starting a 40-minute review, uh, we got some Joe Burrow sound, as he said he is pro-taunting. I am also. And he's like, look, we all get paid. We're yeah. all big guys. You're like, if you, Yeah, if we make a play, like, yeah, I want to stand over the guy and let him know. To be clear, though, I would like to, to backtrack some of my, like, my smack talk about the whole thing. Because, like, when I was doing it in real time, I'm in the stands. And, like, I saw... I, I don't, you didn't I see him drive his knees into no, the guy? No, I didn't. Hell yeah. I could only see... I saw it in real time. We didn't have TVs around us. So, like, I'm not watching a replay. All I saw was kind of what... The aftermath, right? I ain't and then as I, I love it. As... Well, look, I'm just... I just want to say, like, mm, I don't love that move. Like... That feels dumb to just like knee the guy in the chest for no reason. I mean, like for no reason at all. I love the move. It's not like that guy had done something previously right. or there yeah. was some like bad blood yeah, or he whatever. Did. He thought he was going to score and that well, pisses yeah. me off. Whatever. Yeah, if he like slid in the second base and took out the second baseman right. a couple pitches before. Yeah, this wasn't like sure. nah, retaliatory. Like, like it was like he just did it. Like it was just a lot of adrenaline. He was like, oh yeah, my knee's look, going to you, in you your know chest. me. Like I'm not going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that. Right. But. But it was. I'm just saying that the catch I. Catches Hunter Long. That's his Johnny name? Long. Johnny Long. No, I still love. That sounds like a 1980s movie villain. Yeah, I Hunter still Long. love the smack talk. And or I, Johnny Long. I, oh, yeah, I said Johnny this. Right. I tweeted this when we played y'all. There was that. Um, there was the time when some. I don't even remember who it was. Somebody like gets called out at first. They have to run by your dugout. 
The whole dugout's yelling at him. Of course he's going to look over and say something. I don't know what he said. It didn't seem like it was good because the whole LSU dugout did not like it. Yeah. But then there's all these LSU fans on Twitter crying about like, oh, you don't need to look at the dugout. Like, y'all are grown men. Um, I'll say this on Johnny Long. Uh, I think he was operating in the same headspace that I used to where – it's, You're just it, mad that they yes, think that they can win. Yes, yes, yes I exactly, get that. exactly, right? Like, I used to get, I used to have to work myself up into anger that these other teams would even want to be on the field with us. And it was, I always felt bad, especially for like a UL or one of those teams yes. because they shouldn't be there anyway, but you got to find so an angle mad. to get pumped up. Yeah. And so you get mad that you have to be out there when they're not that a legitimate opponent. You get mad that they would even deign to share a field with you. And yeah, you just work yourself into an irrational fury. Well, we talked about that when I was watching the Florida documentary. Remember, who was it that was in the locker room? They were playing Mississippi State and we were beating them at halftime. Who was it? And they, oh, they like uh, went to him and he was, him. Yeah, he was furious. Yes. He was like, why do they think they can even be here? Yes. Sir, yes. it's our field. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, no, we, I know. We're just trying to play the game. But you, you're, you're looking for rationality in uh, irrational headspaces. But aside from that, obviously I know y'all have talked about it. The whole thing was just totally absurd. A waste of my 40 minutes. Yeah, I was 40 so minutes, tired. Crazy. Um, it was ridiculous. There was not one punch thrown, not one no, single punch thrown. Get the Joe Burrow sound ready. It you got is, the Joe Burrow sound ready? It was, it was the wildest thing. And look, I know those SEC officials like to really make it about themselves, but they do. boy, did they. And they clear, think everybody's there for them. To be clear, that's the Hoover. Those are the Hoover yes. boys that deserve not the blame the there. The There's field. not no, necessarily no, they, on the field. The, the people in the field, you could see them. They were actively apologizing mm. to the coaches. They were like, we are so sorry. I mean, it was not their fault, but they had they were the ones. They were the messenger. I mean, think All about the L- had- LSU South Carolina basketball deal. Ooh, that took a long time. That was 15, 15 minutes, minutes. And there was actually like 40? there was physical contact yes. in that one. And that took 15, 40 for this. So dumb. Also, um, as far as the knees are concerned, over the top, yes. Ridiculous, yes. I love it, yes. But also, you are gonna get suspended if you do that. Uh you're gonna get run. Yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, which um, just sucked, though, because I think it was awesome. But I am proud of the SEC officials for coming back the next day and doing the closest thing to an apology that I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, like, what what'd they do? They be- well, they didn't say they were wrong. They just said, you know, after deliberation and, and watching the film, you know, we are gonna um, we are going to shorten the suspension of some of the players, yeah. and these two players are going to continue to be suspended. I mean, it was the closest thing to an apology or them saying they were wrong that I will ever see probably. But it um, felt good. So you're not allowed to stand over your opponent, Todd, either in NC, either in college or the NFL. Here's what Joe Burrow is. This, what are they doing here? Is this okay. a new heights? You this didn't put a link no, to audio. This is not audio. It's what? just a tweet. It's a tweet with a picture. <laughs> it's a of, and it's like it Joe Burrow's quote. There's no audio in we the tweet. We can just read the quote. It's Oh, there is no audio. No. <laughs> Huh. It's Friday. He says, yeah, I'm pro Tawny. <laughs> We're all grown adults that work really hard at what we do. And sometimes we'd like to show it. I'm not going to get my feelings hurt if somebody sacks me and taunts me like you made a play. Like, I get it. Like, good for you. I think that is the absolute correct take here yes. by Joe Burrow. Uh, I don't know why it's not allowed. I guess they want to avoid fights or maybe it's like a sportsmanship-like image t- sort of deal. But I think taunting is one of the most fun things you can do in sports, and we should accept it more. Well, I also thought something that was interesting, and I guess I knew this, but I had not considered it in the context of in which it happened. So, when a fight breaks out or whatever, you know, on the baseball field, yeah. they're looking for they're looking for numbers. You know, they're yeah, looking. Yeah, this is really dumb. So we <laughs> were so on dumb. defense. Our play it was the third out. Our players are running off the field to the dugout, and every single one of those players was suspended because they could see their number because they were on the field. Yeah, and then they it couldn't. They like the wild. Georgia players weren't because they had hoodies. They had on. hoodies. They had on, hoodies yeah. on. That's really silly. It was you know like oh wow. And then the the guy. This is the last thing I'll say. I'll get real worked up. The the guy on for Georgia. I don't even remember his name. Who was the most riled up? The most just. I mean, again, there were no punches thrown, but yeah. the the one that was in everyone's face. He's the guy that walked up and hit the the, the game winning home run. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even realize Wasn't that. suspended. I didn't know that. I had no idea that that actually that that was the case. So, uh, anyways, hey, you won the series. it doesn't matter. Shut we up. won the series. It's that's what I'm saying. T. Bob had not seen any of any of that go down over the weekend because he was still in like I was thinking of Cabo Mexico, mode. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so he came to my class on Monday and we were talking about it and I was telling him about it. I was like, but then you know we won the series. And he was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I know. So that's a lot of complaints. He's like, to I do not want to hear a, anything else. We won the series. Yeah. Flourish. We're trying to get one of them things, and we're probably not going to get did. it this weekend either. 
No, one oh. series win, oh. not a not a game. <laughs> one series win. We're about to go 0-5 uh, likely. Maybe not. Maybe not. We'll see. All right. Um, on the other side of this break, we'll get Alondra's parlay. I got some fun facts about uh, geography. Uh, we have some fun facts about Augusta and whatever other madness is going to happen this hour. So uh, keep it locked right here. Some delicious champagne going down here on Off the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Yeah, like MD Cajun, that, that hit that Joey B took for South Florida as a start to his career blowing up. There you go. Exactly, right? And he got taunted on hard then, and what'd he do? Came back and blew him up. That sort of work ethic, that sort of spine, that steel-infused spine, right. so you get when you work with Community Steel. You need uh, metal buildings. Sheet metal, roofing, trim, accessories, purlin, tubing. All your steel needs manufactured right there in Gonzales, Louisiana. Go straight from the wholesaler, manufactured on site, and then to you. Get live and local human sales team that you deal with, the strongest price point in the game. They are disrupting the steel industry. Go to Community Steel. Come to CommunitySteelCo.com. And then when you go to the website, top right corner, click on Community Steel, and you can uh, find out exactly where they're located in Gonzales, Louisiana. They've been open for already two hours and ten minutes waiting on you. So what kind of service you're going to get. Now you know you can pick up the phone, give them a call as well, because you know throughout our listening area, they can help you. 225-647-2020. And always, again, online at CommunitySteelCo.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, hardy plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. 
Excellent. Join me for a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Preston Guy gets you ready for the spring game. Chris Demu at LSU in Tennessee. And we'll check in on Augusta National. Hunt Palmer Show, one to three weekdays, 104.5 ESPN, Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. ESPN Baton Rouge, ah! New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Oh, guys, feels good as a weekend here, huh? Uh, who else is excited there? A little Pelicans to stress and drink bourbon to tonight. A little, uh, little baseball to stress and drink bourbon to tonight. It's going to be awesome. I think I'm going to be heading out to Tiger Park. I got a buddy oh. throwing out first pitch. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I'm going to bring all... Ken's got a wedding, so I'm going to have all three chillings with me all day today. Uh, probably go out to the game for a bit, run around in the field, in the outfield. Watch Coach Tarina's squad right the ship after the heartbreaking... Uh, well, I mean, say right the ship. They had the great midweek win. But uh, back at it in SEC play this weekend against an Auburn team that's probably better than their record to dictate. Hey, can we call Laundry real quick? I forgot I was told her we were going to call her at 915. Call Laundry and let's get her UFC 300 parlay. Where, so uh, where is she? I saw that she was at a concert last night. Uh, Texas. Okay. And she was at a Parker McCollum okay. concert um, while drinking Cur- Curse Light and that. watching SEC baseball. Oh, Made good. me very happy. Um, all right. Do y'all want the most mind-blowing thing I've ever heard? Yes, I can't wait for it. Minneapolis, Minnesota is north of Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa. Okay. Bruh. Okay. I didn't Come on, know Jake. that. Don't, don't, don't rook <laughs> me here. Come on, y'all. I know y'all like to pretend like you know no, geography. No, no, no. I did not know that. There's but no way. Toronto's like right across from Buffalo. Apparently. Right? No, it is. Yeah. But what I do know about myself is I also am very bad at geography. Like, I Hell forget yeah. See, that. Good. Thank you. Cheers. I forget that, like, I remember being in Starville one time and looking up the train to Chicago. Because there's like one out of Jackson, Mississippi, or whatever. Yeah. You can drive. You can ride all the way to Chicago. And I was like, wait a minute, it goes straight up. Look, I I've, got, I've got more. Who I've knew got Chicago more. was right above Mississippi. I I've don't got know. more. Alondra. I just felt like it was like to the right. I don't know. I I know. I feel you, Alondra. Are you there? Wait, what? I cannot. When y'all are all good, talking perfect, space, great, Tyler, great, excellent. Wait. Listen up. You're about to board a plane, so you need to know this. You're traveling. Minneapolis. Yes, when y'all are all talking at the same time, I cannot hear. Yeah, you got like a weird echo thing going on as well. It's fine. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Okay, this is awful. Um, no. Okay, wait, now I can. Oh, now you I got can. me. Okay, good. No, Alondra, Minneapolis okay. is north of Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa. How about that? There's no way. Exactly. Thank you. That's the <laughs> correct response, Alondra. Thank you. Anyway. It's Canada. How is Canada? Uh, sure. Thank God somebody has United sense in here. Vancouver's Thank you. Probably I miss you, not, I miss you it, more than I knew. Alondra. Where's Vancouver then? Because Vancouver's like right over the line of Washington. No clue. Uh, ooh, is no it? clue. Oh, it's out west? Yeah. Vancouver is just a little, yeah, it's just a okay, little north. Okay, west is believable, but north? Yeah, I, I cannot believe. I always thought Minnesota was just in the middle of the country. Yeah, Vancouver's just north of uh, Seattle, I think. Yeah, just really? very north of it. I cannot fathom would that not have guessed Minneapolis that. is so, more north than all these Canadian metropolitan cities. Yeah, that doesn't compute to me. Um, what does compute is UFC. Uh, Alondra oh. just dropped her first pod, uh, Bad Corner Advice. Catch it every Tuesday. Uh, yes. This week, bringing down UFC 300. Uh, Alondra, give us your UFC 300 parlay. All right, I got a little five-leg parlay for y'all. Five this legs. Main card that we've got going. So the first fight of the night, Bo Nickel, I've got him to win by submission at minus 120. Okay. And then I have Charles Oliveira on the money line at plus 195. Okay. And then Justin Gaethje to win by knockout at plus 150. Okay. And then Jane Wiley to win on the money line by at minus 485. Wait, who's that last I, name? Who's that last name? We're writing this down. Jane Wiley. Wiley, okay. Yeah. By knockout? And then, by, no, 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 just the money line. Okay. And then Alex Pereira to win by knockout at plus 120 for the last leg. Ooh, what's the overall odds on that? That's yeah. a lot of plus in that part plus, of the Alondra. Yeah, plus 3,366. That's free money, guys. I mean, that'll yeah. turn $10 into 300 Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If you put 10 on there, you get 360 I mean. Those are my kind of odds. Yeah, like exactly. That's what Jake plays all the time. Uh, how is Parker McCollum? 
Parker McCollum was awesome. He always puts on a great show. He's one of my favorites out right now. So yeah, he great. looks like he would be. He's good. Little <laughs> boy, f boy, gold chains. Well, yeah, I mean he's gold chain cowboys yeah. like an album. Well, well, yeah, I, I was think. gonna say one of his albums oh, is called okay. Gold Chain Cowboys. <laughs> so, yeah. so you nailed it. Hey, he's told, leaning. He's leaning into earlier. it. He's no, leaning. Like into he it. No, I googled him. I googled him, yeah, and he's got sure. the high hat, and he's got his his tight shirts, and his and his you don't know Parker. Buckle. Uh, I don't think I know Parker. Jake thinks I would know Parker I if I heard would. Parker. Yes. Yeah. So we can put it to the test and try to play me a Parker McCollum song, and I'll be honest about whether play I've heard him, it or not. Play him Hell of a Year, and he'll know it. Oh, I, uh, that's, that's a great song. I don't know if he'll know it, though. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll Maybe see. Pretty Heart. I'm pretty not feeling hard. very confident. Yeah. I've never heard of this man before today. Uh, well, thank you, Alondra. <laughs> so we got Bo Nickel submission, uh, Charles Oliveira money line. We got the Gaethje KO, Wiley money line, and Pereira KO all together yeah, yeah. plus 3,000. Uh, travel safe. All right. Bye. See y'all later. All right. Later. Someone is calling you out in the chat. Me? Yeah. They said Minneapolis is not further north than Ottawa or Montreal. Uh, I've got a... They said, have you seen a map? I've got a screenshot uh, right uh, here I can I've, show look, you. Look, I'm just reading the chat. Da, 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 I don't know geography. I cannot <laughs> confirm or deny. I want to know how you, like, what conversation you were in <laughs> where this is in your... It's barely edging it out. I, you know, you're going to have to take barely that up with Greg in the chat. All right. I mean, look it up on the map. I don't know. I got a screenshot right here. Uh, Speaking, I, you know what I was thinking about? I don't know if you got a ruler to you. I think he's actually right. I think a little bit, you're a little yeah, bit Yeah, it looks a little You're close. not appreciating <laughs> the curve of the earth. Yeah. You're looking at a flat. <laughs> no, seriously. No, seriously. You're I'm looking gonna, at a flat map here. I'm going to side with Ottawa. my guy T-Bob on this one. If anybody knows edging, it's T-Bob. <laughs> he <laughs> said he edges it out. That's, I'm actually going to go with T-Bob on this that one. That was a good joke. I do so many Kegels. Taylor's absolutely correct. I'm going to go with him. Um, but in all seriousness, longitude and latitude. It curves, right? It's not flat. This is a flat map. It, think about think about the curvature. Yeah, I know. Of the I, I do yeah, understand what, I'm what you're saying, that, but that's north of it. But, but I think it's just south. All right. Well, look it up then. Look it up. I'm, I'm actually Prove trying. Me wrong. I uh, we do have Saints uh, news. Breaking news. You want to hear it? No. In a quarterback uh, room that has yeah. Derek Carr and Nathan Peterman. Yeah, hell yeah. Who, who yeah. else could you add to this quarterback room to make it just really <laughs> dynamic, T Bob? Really um, okay, hold on. Let me think. Let me think. Let me Former think. Former SEC quarterback. Okay, I was going to say Mitch Tim Trubisky. Tebow. In the last five Danny years. Danny Edling. Uh, oh, Danny Edling? No, he's playing in the uh, UFL. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. He's playing for Michigan, maybe. Last five Panthers? years, I think. I still have my Danny Edling as a good quarterback sticker. Not Kyle Trask. Because he's actually maybe okay. Yeah. He's um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeff Driscoll? No. I think that's a, like, you went back. Uh, it is uh, Kellen Mond. Oh, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Best quarterback in the SEC. Yeah, Derek Carr, proclaimed. Nathan Peterman, Kellen Mond, Jake Hayner. Okay. That's the quarterback room right there. Is both. that what could go wrong? the most depressing quarterback room that I've ever yeah. talked about here on this show? Yeah. I mean, to begin with, any quarterback room with Nathan Peterman in it is immediately going to be in the dep- the conversation for most depressing. Yeah, Derek Carr as a starter is never going to inspire any confidence. Um, we all like Jake Hayner for that photo shoot, but beyond that, he <laughs> really yeah. hasn't. He looks done like a Lawrence brother. Much. He, he, does, yeah, he does, does actually. I've yeah. never thought about that. He does look he like does. a fourth yeah. Lawrence brother. Yeah. Um, but uh, so Kellamond hmm. was throwing. So it was him and Trace McSorley. We're throwing yeah, at the combine. Now we're cooking, baby. They were throwing at the combine this year. They were just there, and they were the guys actually used to. Hey, so when I went, it Get was it. like the quarterbacks from you know the MAC and the Sun Belt and those conferences. They were there. They were part of the combine, but they were they were throwing arms. Damn! Basically. So Kellen Mond and company out here taking away from those guys shine. Yeah, I get that too. But well, they you were need to shine a little brighter. You need to shine a little yeah, brighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, look, I mean, good, good on Kellen Mond, dude. Uh, he went nine and one. You know, he went nine and one. Is what's worse, this Saints quarterback room or the 06 Bears with Rex Grossman, Brian Greasy, and Kyle Orton? Well, you have to answer this because no, the 06 I, Bears no, went yeah. to the NFC Championship. I, know. I get that. I, I, would take, quarterback the Super Bowl. I would take Brian Greasy and Kyle Orton. Yeah, Kyle Orton was good. Dude. Yeah. Kyle Orton was good, but this hey, was let's his... not sleep on Sexy Rexy. Yeah, like that's a much better quarterback room. Yeah, Taylor. it's fun. It is a funny <laughs> room. Better. It's a funny room to your point, but it is like objectively leaps and bounds better. Yes. I think the Saints worse is worse than this worse, but no. I think it's close. No, it's not even not even remotely close. Kyle Lorton won a lot of games in the NFL for no, two he different did. franchises. He was a rookie this year. Rex Grossman led guy. him to a Super Bowl. 
Brian Greasy went to a Super Bowl as a backup too really? in Tampa. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. He was uh, Brad I mean, Johnson's kind of, backup. Gave Brian Greasy a lot of stolen Wasn't valor he? there. Yeah, I don't no, know. He was, he was but Brad I've never Johnson's heard backup, this right? uttered. He went to the Super Bowl as a backup. I don't think you get credit for being the backup quarterback <laughs> on a. Has uh, Nathan Peterman been to one? I know. I know. Has no. Jay Kaner? Has no, Kellen no, Mond? No, true. I so mean, these saying. are facts, guys. These are these are all facts. I mean, I, then again, to your point, Chase Daniel went to how many Super Bowls backing up? Was he? Oh wait, was he on any of the Chiefs ones that made it with you Mahomes? Love Chase Daniel. No, I, I think Chase that Daniel. was uh, that was Hanny, right? Um, yeah. Well, Hanny? most recently, I'm sure. Hanny. I'm sure. He Who's got it going to be this year? They just signed another one. Oh, it's uh, Carson Wentz. Yeah, yeah, Carson Wentz. Yeah, because wow. they had Gabbert last year. Yeah, did not have that on the old uh, bingo card. Mahomes better I mean, watch yeah, out for his yeah. job. Uh, Blaine Gabbert won a Super Bowl as a backup. Okay, let's put some respect <laughs> on that man's name. Again, I would take Blaine Gabbert <laughs> over. 90% of that Bro, Saints quarterback I would take Blaine Gabbard because there's a reason why you last 15 years in the NFL or however long. I mean, Blaine Gabbard's got to be pushing over a decade in the league now. Um, okay, I got one more geographical fact. Uh, then somebody some somebody talk. pulled out some actual like... Oh, longitude, latitude? Yeah, and to you're, me. I think you're wrong. What? No. <laughs> it's definitely north of Toronto then. Minneapolis is 44.9778 north. Ottawa is 45.4215 north. Mm. Ah, I mean, bros, that's like, come on. It's like basically. You're getting technical. So we're gonna, you like can't be talking e about curve of the earth and whatever. You, we gave you, you came, some actual. You came in here so hot, T Bob, like you had this factual information. <laughs> he goes, if this too, doesn't though. blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Y'all are all, okay, all, all taking a lot of shots. I don't like what's going on here. Uh, let's not lose sight of the fact that it is north of Toronto. Okay. okay. <laughs> you were okay? half right. You were half let's right. Let's not lose sight of the fact that it 50%. is north of Toronto. Um, and it's basically, I mean, Ah, it's kind of even on the There's other There's a front. lot of the U.S. that's north of Toronto. How about this? Like a large portion of it. How about this? Atlanta is east of Baton Rouge. Atlanta is west of Detroit. Think about that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, work that one out in your head. Atlanta's west of Detroit. I mean, I'm not surprised, but I also would not You are surprised. That. It's crazy that you would say you're not surprised. I'm neutral Atlanta about that Atlanta feels fact. like deep southeast. There is no way that you would think that Detroit, Michigan, which we classify as the Midwest, would be east of Atlanta. Yeah, that there doesn't is a make lot any of, sense. There's a lot that is classified as Midwest that is not Midwest. No, yeah, it's just like uh, northern middle. It's, yeah, it's north middle. It's <laughs> north middle. It seems none like it's of, pretty northwest. Well, to and me. it's northeast. It's like yeah, it seems the pretty northeast. Pretty northeast to me. There's a yeah. lot of Midwest yeah. that is technically The fact that northeast. Ohio calls themselves Midwest, I'm like, you're not in the West. See, that's why I'm confused. These stupid naming conventions. It's not even my fault. It's the fact that we call that Should Midwest. Should we rename the United States... Um, the areas of the United States? I thought Minnesota was just like, I looked at a map yesterday and I saw where Iowa was. And in my head canon, Minnesota was just like west of where Iowa is. And that's not Another at part all the of, case. The, of the chef, right? I just Minnesota's that, the like, hat and Iowa's the face. Oh, yeah, Mimmel. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't either. Missouri's the shirt, Arkansas's the pants, oh, Louisiana's the boot. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you look at the map, wow. it's a guy. What? Oh. Y'all do. Yeah. So yeah, Minnesota, is direct, so Minnesota it, is directly north of us? Wait a minute. They call yes. it Mimmel. The last Minnesota. time I took a geography class was freshman year of college, and I'm going to be honest, I was there like 25% of the time. Yeah. See, Bob, this seems like something you would know. I can't believe yeah, you haven't seen this. Like something you would Mimmel. I haven't taken geography since like junior high. His name's high. Mimmel. Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana. Hat, Chef face, Mimmel. shirt, pants, boot. Yep. Look at that. I'm going to need like a like someone to like gray it out for me. You know? Shut up, shut up Chef Mimmel. Um, Mimmel. Whatever. Who needs a map when you have GPS anyway? You know? It's true. It'd be so dumb back in the day trying to figure out how to go if you just had maps to rely on. I don't know how people did it. I mean, I vaguely remember in high school using MapQuest and like printing out directions uh -huh. about where you had to go, but by no means was I like sitting there navigating a road trip with a with a road map. My favorite thing is parents. I guess I say parents. Like my parents, the age that they were, like they almost their whole, I mean, probably more of their life than not, they were using maps. Yeah. So now when I try to get directions to anywhere from my parents or my in-laws or whatever, they're trying to give me like east and west and they're trying to give me road names. And I'm yeah, like, look, no, no, I'm just no, going to no. put just it in. Just give me the address. I just am me, just yeah. going to put it in my phone. That's it. No, that's a classic old, that's a classic old man. I don't even need the address. Thing. I just need the name of the establishment. At this point, I just let my dad finish. You know, I just, I just let him, I'm just like, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Casey Cannon talking about go due west. Yeah, and he'll leave a voicemail <laughs> and he'll offer the full directions on the voicemail. And then I'll text him like, what's the address? I heard the voicemail was great. But what's the, uh, just maybe just shoot it over to me. Wait, did you ever, did you ever um, acknowledge on air the thing about your dad? How that saying that you always say about 
flying with I the Eagles. Think How we you did. got it wrong? I think we talked about this last week. Time. Um, Jake was out, so he wouldn't have heard it. But Rivers uh, points out it was on my sister's Instagram story. But I always say, if you want to hoot with the Owls at night, you got to soar with the Eagles during the day. Right? right? That's yeah, what the cannon raises. That, that is your. Owl, you have to soar with the Eagles during the day. That's, your That's motto. the requirement. That is my motto. Um, apparently, my sister looked up the real quote, and it's, <laughs> "If you want to hoot with the Owls at night." You cannot <laughs> soar with the Eagles during the day. That is some Bobby oh, Abear. Like you can't do both. You, you cannot. cannot. Okay. So Cannon, in an effort to <laughs> legitimize and justify his partying, uh, changed the saying to to say that, look, you can party, but you got to handle your business. And See, I but think, that's I funny, think though, because my dad had a different version of it that was the same. If you want to hoot the eyes, you got a cock a doodle do with the roosters. Yeah, I mean, it turns out that dude who had the original quote was just a. <laughs> like, you can't do both. Too soft. It was just a lame, yeah. But that is our the dads most soft. Our yeah. alphas and, exactly. and hardened and callous. Work and this hard, guy was play soft. hard, dude. Yes. You know? That's the most you know Bobby saying? Hebert I know. logic that I've ever heard. That had me dying. He had my. <laughs> He, he was out in California visiting my sisters and her kids, and they're all eating breakfast, and he's sitting there lecturing them. They're like six and three, four years old, <laughs> and he's lecturing them about hooting and soaring. I'm like, all right, man. Hell yeah. All man. right, man. Because I think Cammie was, she was trying to soar, but she was, Cammie she was suffering so from the hooting. hungover, dude. <laughs> uh, was... It's so funny to me. Our family vacations, my mom just gets so disappointed in us as we're both like violently hungover, but I can generally... I either fake it and or just work harder yeah. to hide it where Cammie's such a boss that she's just like, nah, nah screw you, mom. Like, I'm just going to feel how I feel. And it just, oh, it's it's funny every it's single time. Hey, T-Bob, how do you feel about San Diego being north of Shreveport? That makes sense to me. I feel, okay. like, I feel like Louisiana's deep south, though. That, that, would, that surprises me. But San Diego is technically Southern Cal. Like the, but, but like the most Southern like, California. Yeah, yeah. Like Tijuana. Like it's literally an hour north, north of Mexico. Look at, yeah. look at the map, though. Look at the map, though. Almost the entire part of California is north of Louisiana. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess my head yeah. actually. Uh, by the way, y'all are putting out some real <laughs> ancient Greek constellation energy with this chef thing. Because, like, the same look. way somebody shows you a constellation, you you're like, those. look, it's a lion. Look, wait, what? I don't, I don't, I don't, are you I serious? Don't, I've never heard of that. Face with a nose. Chef hat, face, shirt, pants, boot. Oh! Wait, I see it. No, I see it now. Okay, no. Oh, wait, I don't. I take uh, it back. It's a profile view. Yeah. Look at the nose. Side the view. nose. Oh, the yes. nose. Yeah. The nose becomes your anchor to make it work. I oh, okay. See it. I see it now. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's oh. a chef. Look at uh, that. Never mind. I, I take that. it back on the constellation yeah. energy. And Kentucky's his frying pan, if you want to go like deep. Can, we, into can I it. see the frying pan again? Can yeah, we get no, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah look yeah. at that. T Bub's gonna Oh yeah, is he just cooking up right there on Tennessee? Yeah. Oh man, what's he cooking? I guess. I can't oh, read. What's Tennessee, above Kentucky? Tennessee, I guess, is the, is the grill. Uh, he's cooking uh, Indiana and Ohio. <laughs> oh, boy. Just flipping a little Indiana and Ohio. I see you, Chef Memel. My dog. Um, <laughs> My dog. I cannot believe where Michigan and Ohio are. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, when we get back, Masters Fun Facts. He belong. More champagne chains coming up next. Off the bench with Hester and T-Bob. Pinnacle Exterior Construction. PECbuilt.com. PECbuilt. <laughs> Dot com guys uh trust me go to the website look at the gallery it's gonna blow you away it really is amazing um you need pools outdoor living spaces fences bulkheads pergolas anything and everything outdoor kitchens like uh, shoot you need an entire house pinnacle can build you one that's beyond anything you've ever seen but what about spec pools okay the summer's right around the corner you choose from a number of templates you choose a lot of detail work you make the pool your own and then in just two weeks you have a pool. It's that easy. Go to pecbuilt.com. And T-Bob tells you all the time, like a number of different templates. He's right. It's not just like, hey, you got a kidney shape or you've got uh, this one rectangle shape. No, it's many, many different ones that you can choose from. They have a whole brochure of ones you can choose from. And all of those fit in that two-week timeline that we tell you about every single day. So go check it out for yourself at pecbuilt.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge.
teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Kona inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Preview in LSU, Tennessee, the Tigers' spring game. We'll recap Pell's Kings. Join us Friday's AFR 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. <laughs> the coldest mic on that intro. Welcome back. Well, that's also a way of uh, <laughs> signifying to the audio producer to go ahead and hit the uh, <laughs> hit, hit, hit the rejoin. You did great. Uh, I was, no, Jacob's I was, doing great. Jacob's I was listening great. to the to Luda. Just jaking and jaking, jaking and shaking here in the studio today. A little champagne shenanigans. It's almost 420, jaking and bacon. Jaking Ooh. and bacon. It is almost 4 Wait, so his first Whoa. day, you tell him he's doing great. Shut up, Taylor. Oh, my God. Shut up, Taylor. Don't, Taylor. Don't do that. Hey, it's not my first day, by the way. Video, yeah. Maybe when I call for a video, if you don't you take 10 minutes earlier, to pull it up. You called for a video earlier, and there wasn't a video. <laughs> no audio. I mean, that was on me. That's also true. That Literally me. nothing. That did Admittedly, happen. that's on me. I apologize. <laughs> but that's the one. That's the one you get, okay? Um, I've had right. the retro Pels thing ready for like 45 minutes. Good. Keep it ready, okay? Look. Stay ready. I am the Mozart. You're playing the cello, okay? Wait until I wave my little wand, and then you play the video. It is a little wand, You don't wand go off too. script. It is a little wand. Very little Shut wand. Shut up. Tiny wand. No, it's not. It's above average. Thank you, okay? Relax. Anyway, Taylor, hit that Retro Pels anthem. Oh, oh we're doing Retro? Actually, oh, we're doing no, Retro? No, we're doing Masters. Uh, there's no way we do Masters. You're just doing this despite him. I know. Look at this guy. Oh, there he is. Can I get some audio? Oh my god, I, I hate I hate all of that. <laughs> Start this over with audio. Here is uh Retro Pell's anthem from last night audio, after the big win. What's well, well, not play? Play it. Hey yo, retro! <laughs> Hit the anthem! The force is strong in this one. 
going to hit that anthem, brother. I have you not. What? Yahoo! Hell yeah. Zion Solo. Oh I, I love that intro. I love Retro Pels. Uh, I'm sorry. I know that doesn't play the best on radio, but I would check out the Retro Pels anthem after every game. It's excellent. That was a great Star Wars twist on things. All right. Y'all got the Masters music ready. Do you like it because it's Star Wars or do you like it because you like it? No, I like the anthem because it's one of the most good vibes um, mm. traditions that I've seen. I'm going to take a nap right now. Ooh. Mm. Well, and Zion just a mm. couple of weeks ago talked about when he saw the anthem that he felt that it was representative of this Pelicans team and the vibes that they have in that locker room. And, well, I just thought that was fantastic. And uh, so even though he's not a part of the franchise, Retro Pels doing very good work, getting you excited for this Pelicans team. Oh, man, team I'm just taking a nap right now. Two days. Feels fantastic. Um, all right, River, do you put these together? Yeah, yeah. Give us some fun <laughs> okay. Masters facts. So technically these are not facts. I mean, they're facts about the Masters, but they're really more about Augusta. Um, I kind of left out some of the ones that people just already know, but I got most of these from Joe Pompliana. Um, he does usually like a business sports yeah, he's an awesome newsletter follower. and he's great on Twitter. It's at huddle up. Um, he does a lot of cool stuff, but, um, okay. So Augusta, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, each media member, when they get there, I'm, none of us have been there as a media member, sadly. Um, <laughs> that's not an easy one to get into. Dude. <laughs> when you, I don't know when you are happened. approved and you get there, you get a badge. It is. It has an RFID chip in the badge, so they know exactly where you are at all moments. Ooh. They are tracking all of their media members. Oh, and that kind of wild. I mean, I don't know what you're going to get into as like a media member, but like, they also, don't want you going in those club rooms, bro. On top of that, the media members get to enter a lottery, and if you win, you get to play the golf course. That's oh, cool. Oh no See, way! We dude. should try yeah. it for that next year. Yeah, uh, big Do you know masters how guys. wasted a masters round would be on this crew right here. <laughs> I don't think they would allow you that on the course. Be, that would be so one of the greater good injustices. At the course. That would be one of the greater injustices in all of uh, yeah, sporting I agree. history. I agree. <laughs> okay, I thought this one was kind of cool. Um, so, homes in Augusta, Georgia, are okay. Well, this kind of leads into the next one. So, they're obviously insanely expensive. Like, you can everyone who lives in Augusta basically. Moves out for the it's Masters, and you money. rent you rent out your houses. Yeah. So a player, if you're renting a house um, for like five days or for the week or whatever, it costs about thirty to seventy thousand dollars for the week. Damn. So, but brands like Nike or like other like billionaires who want these giant homes often pay like a million dollars for the bigger homes. A million um, dollars for a but week. This is crazy. So. The IRS has a special exemption in the tax code called the Augusta Rule, allowing homeowners to rent out their homes for 14 days per year without paying Bro. taxes on that income. And so I don't know when that... That is the ultimate rich person <laughs> just massaging the law to whatever befits you. Like, I'm out here paying taxes on these paltry little checks I'm making, and they just get no taxes the well, one time they get a million dollars a week? To be fair... Bruh. So that existed for however long. Now that rule, the Augusta rule, applies to the entire country. So if you have a, a rental home, as long as you rent it out for less than 14 days, you do not have to file uh, taxes on it. But it was just Augusta for a long time. Uh, speaking of making money, uh, the Masters is going to do about $70 million just in merchandise this year. Uh, yeah. The reason that that happened, that is somebody. Golf he pros he love did, some he did the math. Kate, Look. Kate has a Masters polo on from Augusta that Jason McKenzie got him back in the day. We were talking about that this morning. It's, how it's like it's a It's a thing, though. If you have a friend that's going, yes. he will bring back just oodles of, uh, of, of merch for the boys. Right. So yeah. you cannot buy any official uh, uh, Masters merch online unless it's like secondhand. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you have to be in the store to buy it. So a lot of people will send money or ask friends to bring them stuff back. And each year... There's like some of the traditional merch, but then there's also updated things. Like there's gnomes that people buy that they're very like sentimental. Each year there's a different gnome. Oh, that's cool. I'm yes. into that, dude. Um, there's different flags. They have different logos. So like this year, their their big logo is all the um, old logos on stamps. 
So you can buy different stuff with that on it. Um, but that is $277 per second that the what? store is open, that they are making. A million per hour, it yes. says here? 16000 per minute? Yes. So that's wild. But... Um, there is a new thing this year. So Augusta has started to buy all the land around their course. Of course. And of course, just bringing it in. So there's this old um, shopping mall strip that they have turned into a luxury um, event for the week. So you can pay $17,000. You get a... That's it? You, you know, you pay $17,000. You Argentina. get a week long... They sold what out. Getting a this new is, by the way, system? this sold out almost immediately. <laughs> This sold out almost immediately. You can get a week-long tournament badge, and then you have access to an all-inclusive food and drinks, like, luxury space. And they also have a merchandise store in this space so that you don't have to wait in lines at the course. Um, the best part about this is this is seven minutes away from Augusta. Do you, you are not even near the course. Do you stay there? You can. Like, it's just like but a... Do they have places to sleep there? No, or is no, this is just like eating and drinking. No, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so this is not... So the 70 yeah. day is just There's for the bags and, and it's, the it's a fancy wow. watch party. It's a fancy wow. watch party. But you can also go to Augusta. But, like, it's a seven wow. It's seven minutes from wow. Augusta. Wow. wow. Um, and Ew. then I will... Seven this is the last thing. We can do it. <laughs> last thing here. The Masters has one of the most unique TV deals in sports history. So they don't sell the rights to this. They do it for free. It's a handshake deal with ESPN and CBS. The the only thing is they control every single thing that goes on air. So they decide Oh, that's who, really smart. They decide that's who really the sponsorships are, and they only work with about three to four people per year. There's no on-course signage. Yep. They control every single bit pure. that goes out. Um, yeah. And because ESPN is not paying for it or CBS is not paying for it, they get to call the shots. And... But so they do do work with some sponsors, though? Like three to four. Oh, boy. The mm -hmm. ticket to be one of those three to four. I mean, they are just, it just sounds like everything they do is just forced scarcity, right? Like, like just like, like making it exclusive and then ratcheting up the price because of that. That is, that's really good. They have a lot well of rules, too, for the commentators. So, like, the, normally you talk about a golf course, you say, like, the front nine and the back nine. If you say... In, in Augusta, they they call it the first nine and the second nine. Huh. And if you don't say the first nine or second nine, like you're you're done. Do you know why? I don't know. That's just how they do it. Maybe it's just like that's how they do it. That's how they do it. Yeah. Do it. Uh -huh. But so those are all my fun facts. But speaking of the Masters, so there's cool. the there's the par three tournament where the players yeah, play Ricky and, Fowler won. and somebody they have their caddies who can be whoever they want, and usually it's like family members or friends or whatever. So this year, a lot of the players had pretty young kids about the same age. So there were a lot of kids on the par three um, course and acting as caddies, you know? And so they're, all their kids are running around. First of all, Ricky Fowler's daughter is like the cutest kid I've ever seen in my life. Ricky she's Fowler's like, pretty cute. She, but she's like probably two or three. She yeah. is just wilding out. She's like so cute. Uh, Speeds kids out so there about fun. the same age. So much and it's um, such an individual solo lifestyle for them. That's going to be so sure. nice to have your kids out there. Well, and they're all the about Masters. the same age, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so they can all play oh. together. But Bubba Watson's daughter went out there, and she actually took a couple putts. Look at this girl putting. She is a beast. She made these three putts, and they're not like casual, I'm in a putt-putt course putts. These are like from pretty far away. Like a golfer pull up would this video. maybe we'll, we'll do it on the other side. Mess this up. Yeah, no, you got to pull up this video. These are actually incredible putts. This is my first time watching live. So I right guess here. I have a question for you, as like dads of girls now. Now Jake's in there yeah, with the yeah. girl. Yep. Can you imagine this is your daughter? I mean, if it was my, I would be bawling my eyes out, like just so proud oh, and like I mean, so yeah, sentimental. You know me, nah, she, yeah, Bubba yeah, Watson's yeah. daughter's out there. And Bubba Watson's a notorious putts. crier as well. I think I like the handshake with, with, was that brother? It's her brother. I like that even more. Um, she immediately well, walks up to brother, does yeah. the little dap up, does the handshake. I mean, she's incredible. Uh, you know is what's she incredible? allowed to putt for Bubba? You know what's incredible <laughs> to me is how good the um, these golfers are that you have a part three tournament and there's like six holes, holes in one. Yeah. Right, like something that nobody ever achieved, they, and like, and they're the most. I saw all of them. They're the most ridiculous holes in one you've they, ever seen. They do, they do, like kind of funnel the greens. Yeah, yeah, to, a little bit. You can hole. tell because yeah. everybody's hitting that. They like, hit one it to a spot and kind of rolls yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, still though. Well, it's still that impressive. Last, that, yeah. whether, maybe it was the second putt that Man. she made. It Bruh. was a pretty far. Like it was a long. No, these putt. putts are these wild. Putts are, yeah, <laughs> and she's a and she's a righty. She has incredible control. Oh yeah, she's a righty. She's lefty. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Is that is that genetic or just random? I know Grant's. Le I mean, Estelle's left-handed, like and I'm not. Gene. I don't know. Um, we got no left-handies over got a here. Lefty. 
and we got Estelle's left handed. Me and Jake are lefty. What's up? Yeah. Oh, are you too? Sometimes yeah. though, I sit on my right hand and then do a little stranger action. <laughs> you know anything about that, Taylor? Um. This is this. You turn this nice. No comment. Masters music <laughs> moment. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. I've been doing it for a decade. You know, like, I don't, like, I don't know what to <laughs> what tell you. But like, no, I am, if I am you don't know what you're well, getting so into at this point, it's like, it, that's kind of on you. Oh, you really snuck that one in there. Um, all right, when we get back, close out the show, Ask the Bench. Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob. Trash Rangers. Your option if you want great, local, efficient, caring, uh, Louisiana waste management. Okay, if you're in Ascension or Livingston Parish, you're lucky. Because you're not beholden to the national guys. You actually have a choice about who gets to manage your cans. And the chances are, you've seen around your neighborhood, red trash cans popping up. You see the red trucks. That's trash rangers. And there's a reason why everybody's making the, the, the switch. It's more reliable. It's more efficient. They text you the night before, so you never forget to put out your cans again. You go to TrashSignUp.com in just three minutes. You can choose your amount of cans, the price, your days. Um, and if you need, like, roll-away storage for a project, whatever, uh, 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 dumpsters, they're your answer, man. And again, they're local. They're people. They're here for you. Trash Rangers, go to trashsignup.com. 225-401-0838. Reliable weekly service. No hidden fees. And very important here, certainly for T-Bob and I, wish we could be a part of this. Weekly text reminders. And so if you forget yeah. to put the can out, it's okay because they're going to remind you with that weekly text reminder. TrashRangersLLC.com. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana the local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we... 
Tenegra. Join us for the Friday edition of Live at Lunch from Rafino's on Highland Road. We'll keep you up to date on everything going on at the Masters and preview LSU versus Tennessee in college baseball. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Friday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All-Star Toyota presents Off the Bench with Hester and T-Bob, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria, and 1130 The Tiger. Cheers to Taylor. We're drinking some cold Kurz Light here in the studio. Off the Bench brought you by cold Kurz Light, like Hard Seltzer, Blue Moon Light Sky, Citrus Sweet. I'm still uh, impressed by the eight minutes. Yeah. It's impressive. It's the longest Taylor. Oh, you talking about quick? Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> Off the Bench. <laughs> The beer uh, run. The beer run. The beer run. The beer run was eight minutes long. Uh, will the Deadpool and Wolverine movie be the top money making movie of all time this summer? Mm. Um, it could break. I believe Deadpool one still has the record for rated R gross. Does it uh, could break? It'll that. break that. I think. Yeah, okay. it could break that. What's the top re- like of all time now? Is it still Avatar? <laughs> if Maybe? it is Avatar, I hate everything about <laughs> life. Was, uh, no, I think it's so uh, Infinity War. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't yeah, think fine. it is. I think it's Avatar, but yeah, we'll fact. Uh, ask the bench. No Tennessee video this year. No, we're gonna hold off till the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna chill out to the playoffs. Not, not a little bit, like, man. Yeah. No, 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 chill you out, saw, relax. You saw Tennessee on that map. Relax. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're bringing a big bat to bear <laughs> this weekend. Uh, ask the bench in honor of UFC 300 favorite MMA fighter or boxer of all time. Um, I was a Vander Holyfield guy. Because uh, I got a picture of him when I was younger, so I liked oh, okay. him a lot. But I mean, not Dustin Poirier, I mean, currently fighting. Yeah, I think but you're probably right. Yeah, I, shut I love up. that guy. The diamond's fun to watch. Shut up. Um, ask the bench. Uh, uh, Avatar is still number one, by the way. <sighs> Avengers makes... Endgame is two. How many games else you baseball Avatar, winning this weekend? The Way of Water is number three. One. Which nobody <laughs> saw. Yeah, who, who saw ever, that? Who has ever who talked about up? that movie? Off the bench with Hester and T Bob. <laughs> There's not a movie that I understand less. Nobody has ever said anything casually in passing seen conversation about Way of Water. I've never seen it. I know nobody who's seen it. And yet, here it sits as the number three grossing movie of all time. That's ridiculous. What's not ridiculous is MMR. Okay. And uh, if you are looking to ignite your career and you want to join uh, the largest. Uh, electrical uh, interpretation company in the entire country, you want to join MMR. And, and look, you want to join it because uh, there's a dynamic culture there. They have outstanding benefits and they offer a tailored path for both professional and personal development. And I don't care. Look, if you're a student seeking internship, start to talk to a man. They can really set you off on a path to success. You'll go all around the world. They have glow offices all around the world. Uh, but even if you're a seasoned pro, or you're just starting out. We hire the best at MMR, and we want you. Apply now at MMRGRP.com. That's MMRGRP.com. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com.